be the first time I'm going to do an ARD prologue in ASMR. Yeah, you're one of the lucky viewers who always going to see this. So, new anime season means only one thing for the ARD: new volume. Now, this is going to be a different volume. I've also included animes here which will start late in the season as part of the official roster because uh, these days I really need to pace myself when it comes to recording and editing reviews so mangyari uh, nyan one of the animes in the roster will start airing sa December pa so giving me a uh, giving me less animes to record and review for the month of November and of course uh, well this first digest uh, will only recorded 11 anime reviews for this one so for the next three weeks we're going to uh, review 12 animes after Fana Pirate Princess has done airing ayan, month of November na so, all throughout 11 animes naman. So, gana na maging insiste natin ngayon for volume 6. Medyo intimate na yung, ano, yung ang ARD when it comes to views. Kaya, I'm really happy for myself. And, thanks to you mga lifestyle the ARD is still here. So, hindi na ako papatumpik-tumpik mga mga lifestyle Welcome to Volume 6. Like I said in the last review, <laughs> you all is uh, in a funk. Because, nakatagdag pa yung seemingly na pag puera ng kanyang mga ibang kapatid sa kanya. And, Nakita rin, sa, nakita rin niya sa schedule na that he has nothing to do for the day. <laughs> Nakatulong ito sa funk na nararanasan niya sa episode na to. Then, who comes to help? I didn't expect this. The Beauty Roman <laughs> and Professor Gako to. <laughs> Hindi pa sila nakaka-move on sa cosplay na ginawa nila last episode. In their own zany way, they were able to help um, Yuo get over his funk and uh, made him realize that, well, based on the clues that he gave them, it's his birthday today. And, sinabi nga ni, ni Professor Gakuto, it's probably your birthday today. At yun, dun nga na-realize ni Yuo. Ano? It is my birthday today. Pero, um, this, what's this, this shrink session he had with both of them, si Romy and si Gakoto, didn't come with recaps. Yup, folks. I am reviewing a recap episode right now. So, unfortunately for me, we're gonna, we'll, we'll have to go through this. So, after uh, recap, after recap, after recap, of the last, probably the last, before this, the last three or, and then, the last five or six episodes. Medyo, medyo nakakalimutan ko na rin eh. So, final scene. Pop! Tamang hilan, hinala ni Yuo. His other siblings threw him a birthday party. And, what we, we come to know in this episode for a fact now that the Goa siblings don't celebrate their birthdays. It is only now na sinelebrate pa nila ang birthday ng bulso nila kapatid. At may uh, natuwa si Yu, despite all the screw jobs he um, he pulled off against all of them and the way um, he screwed with Luke's um, uh, with Luke's denseness, uh, I think uh, that's forgiven. Pero merong nagspark sa kanyang memory na hindi rin na siya mismo hindi niya maintindihan. 
And the episode left it at that. Bottom line, mga lifestyle, this is a recap episode. Pero, merong, I don't know, pero parang, may Easter eggs eh. I'll, I'll explain it ARD style. Yung pacing at yung plot, well, there's nothing to explain. It's a recap episode. Kaya, natural, mabilis ang pacing ng episode. And, yung plot, there's not, there, there's actually no definite plot. Because it is a recap episode, bottom line. Pero, yung flow, something's there. First gear shift was, was when you uh, well, actually, Euro, um, told you to, to stay away from that room. Kasi yung, Diba, that's the opening scene kasi nililinis nila yun. Eh, eh syempre, nag, nagkaroon ng curry hell eh, <laughs> last time. So, nilinis, nilinis, sila mismo naglinis nun. Pero, hindi nila pinasali si Yuo. Much to, much to Yuo's uh, uh, confusion. Why did I call this a gear ship? Well, it triggered the episode. Bottom line. Final gear shift was when during oh, it's actually the final scene. There was a sequence there when in nagkaroon na naman ng <coughs> it's actually the second time na para nagkaroon ng flashback moment si Yuwo na hindi talaga malinaw. It's all uh, it's all in black and white eh pinakita. So, nagtataka na naman sa iyo kung bakit siya nagkakaroon ng ganong flashbacks. Hindi naman niya maalala kung ano yun, kung ano yung event na yun. This is the Easter egg I am talking about, mga ka-lifestyle, at the beginning of this review. Now, i-deep dive natin ng konti yan. What if, I repeat, what if you will is capable of more evil things than than all the ones he has already done. That he has a split personality or hindi ito ang totoong yuo. Kumaga, he has um, memories so suppressed that if he starts remembering them, he will turn into the real yuo. Kung baga, yung mga <clears throat> yung mga katalatadoan na nakita sa na, nakita natin sa kanya in uh, in the in the previous 8, 9 or 10 episodes wala ito sa kung ano talagang kaya niyang gawin to really make uh, the lead character's lives a living hell even even make his own siblings lives a living hell or excuse me talagang meron siyang nalalaman tungkol sa whereabouts ng pang-anim ni, ng pang-anim na Goa sibling na hindi niya maalala sa ngayon a lot of possibilities folks with that gear shift alone so these two gear shifts that I saw Especially the second one. I'm betting 99%. It will play a role down the line in this uh, in season two of uh, Sevens. It will play a role. Kaya even though this is a recap episode, may nakita pa rin akong kakaibang sequence dito. Na uh magkakaroon ng repercussions in uh, in future episodes. Kaya, the feeling that I had for uh, King's Raid episode 24 when talagang I felt scammed. Kasi, back in the final three episodes na, ngayon ka palang, ngayon ka palang magre-recap. You, you, uh, Sunrise Beyond should have done that five episodes ago. Or, um, 
before the road to the finale started. Hindi ngayon. Tito, I did not feel scammed. I did not have that same feeling. Talagang, may nakita ako rito na na pwedeng magbago sa takbo ng anime na to. Well, just goes to show you that not all recap episodes are bad for an anime. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 68. It is a recap episode. Normally, for recap episodes, I either give it the one thumb down automatically or I don't review it at all. <laughs> recap episode eh. Pero, um, I got something to confess, mga ka lifestyle. At the beginning of the episode, nung unang beses na sumipa na yung, ano, sumipa na yung mga recap scenes, I thought, Oh, fucking God. It's King's Raid episode 24 all over again. Pero, as the episode went on, parang, sabi ko, hmm, maybe I should stick on. Maybe I should stick it up with this episode. Parang may nakita ako mga easter eggs dito. Parang, magkakaroon ng, parang may ipapakita ng easter egg dito eh. So, yun nga. The final scene. There was, uh, it was the second time you had this, had this flashback, um, uh, this flashbacks in his brain na hindi niya, na kahit siya mismo, hindi niya maintindihan kung bakit. Bakit meron siyang ganong memories. So, that can have repercussions in future episodes. Kung, if those flashback moments play out, we can we can now go back to episode 68 para ma-recall natin kung paano nagsimula to. Pero it's still a recap episode so I had to It's actually the first time I gave such a rating to a recap episode. Yeah, probably the first time at least for this uh, at least for at least for this series. Hindi pa rin nakatakas sa low rating ang recap episode ito. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 68. Sorry, mga kapatid. Sorry to my fellow. It's a recap episode. Pero, it'll have repercussions. All we have to do now is look ahead for the next episode. Let's just do the drill, mga kapatid. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. So in the meantime, if you still felt scammed by this episode, kayo bahala. But right now, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Welcome back, Fena. <laughs> I say I, I had to, um, I had to realign the timetable just to. Uh, uh, just to make, uh, just to make more time to edit the reviews, and at, but at the same time, recording all these reviews in uh, in only a matter of days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last digest, walang fena. So. Yeah. On with the story. Abel is sulking over the fact that he lost fena. So, dito na nag-umpisa tumakbo yung his backstory. Here's how he met Fena's mother. So, they obviously um, he was um, he was in this forest. Then he suddenly sees this really beautiful girl named Helena dancing around kasi ang ang reason niya She's lost. And she has no clue what she's dancing. But anyway, they they became friends, they became really close. Then one day, he saw Helena with um with this really tall guy. 
who turns out who turned out to be uh, Franz Hauptmann, who was then a butler to Abel's father, the king. Ngayon, um, tinawag niya si Helena, eh, medyo hindi siya pinansin. So, Helena and Franz uh, walked out of that garden. Then later on, uh, rumors have been circulating na uh, nabuntisan si Helena ng kanyang ama. Then, um, itinanan ni Franz to, of course, to his home country, the Netherlands. He, he's a Dutchman. Then, um, well, this was, well, as the years went on, obviously, he became a naval officer. Dinipoint sa kanya ng isang tauhan niya na si Helena ay nakakulong. So, takbo siya sa, sa lugar kung saan nakakulong si Helena. So, nakita sila uli. After so many years, eh, he asked Helena, why, why did you leave me? Why, why did you disappear? So, inexplain lahat ni Helena sa kanya. I am, sabi ni Helena, I am very sure your father is not the father of my child, but Franz. If ever you meet the child, you probably also have a calling to Eden. Kasi, meron, meron paniniwala kasi no na, uh, siya, si Helena, that she's already done her role. Parang, parang 1941, ah. They have roles to play. Parang, parang ganito rin to. Okay? Parang ganito rin ito, mga ka-lifestyle. Her um, parting shots to Abel at the time were, I've already played my role. It's about time for me to go to Eden. Eh, ngayon tinanong naman ni Abel, Will I see you there? Sinabi lang ni Helena, We're not sure. But, if you see the child, you probably also have a role to play. You probably also have a calling for Eden. So, yun pala, kaya pala nakakulong si Helena, bibitayin na pala siya noon the next day. So, the next day, ayun, she was burned at the stake in front of the king, in front of Abel, and in front of every, probably, every corrupt politician surrounding the royal family. And when all is said and done, when all her remains have been burned to a crisp, Abel said, there's nothing for me here anymore. Nothing at all. So he just walks away from the site of execution. Doon nagtapos yung backstory. Now, while all of this was going on, Fena and... Yukimaru were contemplating on a song Yukimaru learned from Fena when they were kids. Na ngayon lang naaalala ni Fena. Kinakanta nga niya actually. So nakikanta rin si Yukimaru. Now, they were they were deep diving into the lyrics at parang na realize nila na some parts of the lyrics were actual experiences by theirs um, and all these months past. Kumaga, na-encounter na nila ang mga nangyari sa antang ito. Fena remembered the title of the song. She finally remembered. Its title is Vice Versa. So, it hit upon yung Kimaro. Di ba merong... Kasi, tinignan nila ulit yung part ng lyrics na parang, parang coordinates to something eh. The reverse holds true kasi yun, ang, yun talaga ang ibig sabihin ng vice versa. So, ni-reverse nila. Kinuglood ka ni Fena that these are the coordinates to Eden. Eh, tinanong ni Yukimaru, what if it's not? Sinabi naman ni Fena na this Eden is actually calling me out. So, this is the effect. So, <clears throat> with this reason, with this Oh, shocking discovery of theirs. They gathered the crew. So, nag-meeting sila aboard the Bonito. Um, Dinis close na ni Fena, yung coordinates. Supposedly, ng Eden. Okay, sabi ng... Sabi ni Chubaki, ano, agree ba tayong lahat? Ito, pupuntahan natin. 
uh, umagri ang lahat. Then, they all, for, for some reason, they, they just looked at Fena. Actually, final scene na ito. So, started, so, Fena started her speech, her pep talk, na, I have been, uh, sorry to disrespect. I've been causing you guys all this trouble. So, and now I have realized my calling. Set a course for Eden. Looks like the race to Eden is now on. Yan ang ibig sabihin nun. <laughs> so, let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Excuse me. <laughs> Bago tayo magsimula. <laughs> Pace! Well, it's kind of slow, pero... Um, do you need to put some action sequences in this kind of episode? No! Kasi! Ang dami nating nalaman sa episode na to. Um, to tell you the truth, mga kalaysa, I think I don't need to deep dive into this episode because it's almost self-explanatory. Explain ko. The pacing will make you realize this. That Abel and Fena Maybe siblings. Now, hindi pa confirm kung talagang anak kung anak si Pena talaga ni Franz Hauptmann. Kasi uh, at that time, uh, during the backstory sequence na rumors have been circulating na inanakan siya ng hari ng tatay ni Abel. So, more there's a 60% chance that Pena and Abel are siblings. Pero, naging girlfriend ni Abel ang nanay ni Fena. Gulo, no? <laughs> that's how, um, that's how dirty the lifestyle of royal families were during those times, historically. Okay? This is, I'm not surprised at this kind of, uh, at this kind of twist, especially in a historical anime like this. Okay? I'm not surprised at all. But the pacing made me realize this. When the race to Eden begins, it will now be Fena versus Abel. Magtutuos ang magkapatid dito. So, we will be seeing not just a race to Eden, but who has the more legitimate calling to Eden. That's what the pacing of this episode made me realize just now. If this were, um, if the pacing of this episode were slightly fast, baka hindi ko na-appreciate ang episode na to. <laughs> Tell you the truth, mga kalites. Flow naman. First gear shift here was when Abel started recalling how he met Helena. Yung nani ni Fena. Why did I call this a gear shift? Simply lang. Because Abel right now is at a um, is in a funk because he lost his only chance to see Helena kasi well simply binaw binawi si Pena ng mga goblin knights so his chance now at um of seeing Helena again are down to zero unless in, in order nga niya ng ng north uh, northwesterly course ang ang barko niya they should set a course for that pero I don't think he he's not fully aware of Eden of where of where Eden actually is basta lang hula lang sa ng course so that's what this gear ship will make you realize second gear ship was was when Yuki Marong and Fena deep dive into that song they shared when they were kids. Bakit ko tinawag na gear shift to? Again, simple. A simple song that was passed down from father to daughter. Abay, ano pala ito? Um, this is actually vital information as to where Eden is. And, naalala palang, well, uh, I forgot to mention Naalala din ni Fena dito Yung uh, Winisper sa kanya ng nanay niya When When she was an infant uh, 
Is her brain that developed already? Pero, anything can happen in an anime. Na, alala niya na merong ibinulong sa kanya ng nanay niya na ganitong, kla- na ganitong klaseng lyrics. So, this now solidifies that Helena, uh, the Hotman, Helena and Franz know where Eden is. And they put that into a song na ipinamana nila kay Fena. Deep dive. That's what this gear ship made me do. Sorry. Final gear ship was well the final scene where Fena decides to captain the Bonito herself. Proverbially. Kasi the crew, the entire crew gave her that look because siguro ang siguro patakan nila. He who has the coordinates makes the rules. Well, Fena now has the coordinates to Eden, so she now makes the rules. That makes her the captain of the Bonito. Eh, di pirate princess ka na? Mmm. O, di ba? Kaya ako tinawag the gearship to. Fena has finally asserted herself as the leader of this crew. Because the Hauptmans have been the Goblinites' financiers for I think for, for hundreds of years before uh, before Fena and now Fena gets to captain her own ship eto nga submarine pa unheard of okay kaya sila sabi ko sa inyo steampunk anime ang ano eh ang Fena Power Princess eh Be- mainly because of the existence of a submarine in uh, probably this is probably during the Renaissance wala pang submarine no Renaissance Pull that aside, Muna. Again, Fena has asserted herself in this gear ship. Talagang sinabi niya sa crew, set a course for Eden. Di, agree lahat. Tapos ito namang kambal, sinabi nila, butom na ako eh, kumahin kong tayo. <laughs> Pao kaya itong kambal na ito. Guto kumin eh. So, these three gear ships that I saw, will play a role in the final three episodes of this anime. Tandaan nyo, mga ka-lifestyle. We're, we are already in this anime uh, final five episodes. Episode 9 na eh. Baka, nakakalim- Baka nagkakalimutan na tayo. So, we'll now be entering the final three episodes. Kaya, these three gear ships will play a role. One way or another. If everything plays out, You'll be able to go back to episode 9 to to make you remember how it all how it all came about. Parang ganun yan. Plot wise, lanchado. Ayo ko sabihin malinis kasi merong back story. Although it came from now the main antagonist of the anime, si Abel. So, his side of the story is is just as important as Pena's side of the story. So, Kung hindi lumabas ang backstory na to, baka hindi natin nalaman na pwedeng magkapatid si Fena at si Abel. Kasi lumalabas through this backstory, through the rumors, if it were true, magkapatid sila. Parao sila anak ng hari. Oh, wow. Pero, um, if you would take into account Helena's side of that story talagang iginigiit niya na si Franz Hoffman ang ama ng bata si Fena that's what this plot will make you realize kaya it's that well ironed out you get it is where for a well ironed out plot to uh, to make the viewer fall into a deep dive like like what happened to me when I was watching the episode so based on the plot the road to Eden will become a battle of siblings kung talagang uh, totoo na hindi anak ni Franz Hauptmann si Pena if you're going to if you're going to, if you're going to hold that thought so pace flow and plot we all came together for this episode Setting us up for a wild 
final three episodes. Yun ang nakikita ko rito. Based on this episode alone, we are being set up for a wild and rowdy final three episodes. Talagang kapanapanamig na ang pwena. So, Pena Pirate Princess, episode 9. Dessert. Two thumbs up. Alam nyo, talagang ano eh. Very shocking ang... Hindi, hindi naman, hindi naman exactly shocking to me kasi I'm uh, I'm a bit of a world history buff myself ever since uh, ever since my senior year in high school. Kaya, I am not surprised na kung merong ganitong twist sa isang royal family. Talaga nag... Well, If you're the king of a country during the Renaissance, you really need to, uh, well, as we say in Filipino, magparami ng lahi. Kasi, the more, the more offspring you have as a king or a queen, so the more chances now of selecting who can succeed you. Kasi, mahir- kasi those times, right, those times, Mahirap din kasi mag-invest uh, sa isang anak lang. Eh, paano kung anak, yun, eh, anak na yun eh uh, mentally incapacitated? Or physically incapacitated? Or lumaking may sayad sa utak? He or she's not fit to rule. So, kailangan meron ka pang ibang anak na pwedeng gawing successor mo. Ganon ang mindset ng araw. So, I can't blame Fena. <laughs> I can't even blame Abel. So, kung talagang magkapatid sila. But, pina- talagang uh, pinagpipilitan ni, ni Helena in the backstory na this is Franz's child. Anak niya kay Franz Hauptmann ito. The butler. Pero, so, teka, Deep dive muna tayo sa origin ni Franz Hoffman. If Franz Hoffman started out as a butler for the king, how did he amass such a fortune? Or, sigo, or baka talagang ganit siya sa isang mayamang pamilya sa Netherlands? Uh, because he is a Dutchman. Siguro, tinago niya sa tahari ang kanyang tunay na financial status. So he worked as a butler, or pro- he probably did that out of spite for his own family. Because anak ma, siguro nga anak mayaman si Franz Hauptmann. Because for hundreds of years, based on the story of the Goblin Knights here, the Hauptmanns have been their um, what's it called this benefactors. In today's tra- in today's terms, mga financier. So. Franz Hauptmann probably did this to um well, to get a bride probably maganda si Helena at uh and well if he can elope with Helena back to his home country all in good may may dinadala na may dinadala na siyang anak pero I don't think na uh, totally sold on the idea that they are siblings si Abel. Remember in one episode, pinalalabas ba kanya ni Pena na siya ang ama ni Pena at hindi si Franz Hauptmann. You know, ang pag-ibig nga naman, it can really make you sick in the head sometimes. But anyway, Let's just wait for the, the final three episodes to play out. Particularly the next one. The the, the upcoming episode. Kaya, tutok na mga lifestyle sa anime na to. So again, Fena Pirate Princess, episode 9. Two thumbs up. What do we do mga lifestyle? No-brainer na dapat sa inyo. Just do the drill. 
We will wait for next week and watch that episode. So in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this in this first digest for volume six. We find our uh, well, uh, our main protagonist, si Botan, uh, just uh, finishing her normal day at school. When she gets home, well, she gets assaulted. My well, uh, she was able to subdue her assailants, and she also finds out that they're part of uh, well, uh, something more grand. As explained later on by her grandfather. Yung pala, uh, hinar na pala ng, ng isang uh, Japanese company ang kanilang pamilya para, well, isalba ang mundo. Probably uh, on orders of the Japanese government. To the surprise of everybody, Botan happily accepts. Because she totally thought at that point that her grandfather was losing his mind. So, well, that triggered the episode. And we find out later on that she has a uh, partner named Kuruma, who's a total buffoon. <laughs> and uh, a fat guy who's uh, obviously their handler. They, they instantly get shipped to Norway, uh, to Oslo, Norway to be exact, because the opening scene showed a, well, a train falling from the sky and... Uh, crashing into a into a posh neighborhood area of Oslo. They went to the scene, and wow, Botan shows her wares by disguising herself as one of the researchers there. Exacto, ang copia niya. She was able to get in, and to the surprise of her uh, teammates, oi, she. To call this, uh, discovers a gruesome sight, really disturbing, folks. Bodies were, uh, were well, hindi naman sila ina agnas or anything. They actually melted into the surroundings, and well, uh, the handler quickly deduced that this is the work of a Tesla fragment. So in ex- well, beforehand, in explaining in Botan what these Tesla fragments are, her grandfather has a close connection with the late great Nikola Tesla. Uh, we all know who Nikola Tesla is. He's one of the greatest scientific minds of all time. And according to uh, Botan's story, him and her grandfather were were quite were quite close and. Uh, days before uh, Nikola Tesla's mysterious death, binini sa lolo niya na what if these fragments come out in the open? It's their family's job now to gather all of them. Something to that effect. And well, she eventually gets discovered by the real researcher and stand off. Uh, but she eventually escapes and while they were escaping uh, they find another incident such as the one in the opening scene a uh, parang, uh, porthole is, is opening but on top of an elderly couple nakita nila well, mukhang, uh, mukhang may babaksa na mga sasakyan so Botan and Kuruma went, uh, uh, ran all the way from their truck to the elderly couple to save them. May bumagsak na truck. But the elderly couple was safe. And eventually they got, um, uh, um, what's it called this? Uh, they got tracked down by Norwegian police. Uh, the chase is on again. Final scene. Who is this? Hmm. This guy who looks like Dio from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure declaring that the party has started. Hmm. We'll just have to find out in future episodes, shall we? 
But in the meantime, let's break this episode down ARD style. Base. Well, uh, from the get go, the, te the tense pacing is there. Pero hindi porque tense ang pacing mga ka lifestyle. It's bad na. Nope. It's totally fine because what this pilot is telling me is this. It is a race against time. So, you really need to make the audience understand that. Well, <laughs> the pacing just made me understand that. Need I say more? Flow naman. Well, first gear shift is the opening scene uh, where Botan gets assaulted and uh, well casted to to see if her training has paid off basically why did i call it a gear ship <laughs> simply lang it triggered the pilot obvious na obvious it triggered the pilot second gear shift was when uh, botan discovered uh the the gruesome site at the uh at the site of the accident what does this gearship tell me? Well, it tells me what is at stake for our main protags. If the if these Tesla fragments are this dangerous, well, they got their hands full. Final gear shift. Well, it was during the final scene when this. Uh, Skyo looks like Dio declares uh, that the party has started. If there's anything that this gear ship should tell us, it's this. If these Tesla fragments are dangerous, well, Japan is not the only country interested in this. And mga mga espia rin na mga toy. They, they, they look more like secret agents than our main protags, actually. So, Alam naman natin lahat that uh, well, some of us, at least, that the inventions of Nikola Tesla can really serve mankind well. Well, it has. Alternating current is the uh, is the current of choice right now for all forms of uh, electrical and electronic appliances because well, it's a lot safer. <laughs> it's not, and it's not going to uh, send you to the hospital due to electric shock. Hindi ganun, ka, hindi ganun ka bilis yun. And um, according to conspiracy theories, he also developed wireless electricity. Imagine if that uh, came out to the world. We would be rid of underground wiring, overhead wiring, and probably a lower electric bill. Ooh. Kaya, every nation in the world is seeking these, um, at least in the anime, these Tesla fragments. Dahil marami pa mga invention si Nikola Tesla na hindi pa lumalabas or ayaw palabasin ng ibang gobyerno. Nakapag deep dive na tayo through this gear shift alone. So these three gear shifts, if they don't trigger this entire anime, yep. Panorin nyo lang ang tatlong gear shift na to, maintindihan nyo na ang pilot na to. Plotwise, malinis. Kasi there were a few flashback sequences siguro, dalawa, dalawa lang nakita ko rito. They, you can easily set them aside muna to concentrate on the main continuity of the episode. Kaya malinis pa rin ang plot. So you can, well, kahit, well, sa isama mo ang dalawang flashback sequ sequences na to, or hindi, you will still be in the main continuity of the episode. Ganong kalinis ang plot ng episode na to. So pace, flow, and plot we all came together for this pilot but um, I couldn't say it's one of the best uh, this season because as of um, 
this recording. Uh, I haven't gone through the other animes in the current roster right now. Okay, uh, but it's a really good pilot and a uh, uh, a rather feel good one of that because uh, we already saw the dynamic between Kuroma and uh, Botan here. <laughs> Mukhang hindi magkakasundo dalawang ito. And their handler has their hands full with these two. So, Tesla Note Episode 1. Diretso mic drop na. You know what? Animation wise, it's almost the same as X arm, pero uh, story wise, it's just as good. Uh, X arm has been a precedent to um, to most animation companies when it comes to mixing CGI and traditional animation. Um, I think the company that learned best from X Arms animation debacle was Shirogumi, the guys behind uh, Night at 2041. Pero dito sa sa Tesla Note, uh, it's by Studio Gambit. I've seen uh, well, if you guys have if you guys haven't seen the episode yet, well, he, there is one scene there where in he nawa ni Botan yung isang uh, matanda while, while they were saving the elderly couple nung hinawakan niya yung matanda naging CGI yung matanda and I thought to me uh, hmm pulido after all ang animation ito because the moment the uh, the lead character uh, touched a uh, uh, what you call this parang extra na gawa sa traditional animation naging CGI kagad yun I never saw that in X-Arm. Yeah. To those anime fans who uh, superficially judge an anime based on its animation alone. Siguro naman makukontento na kayo sa animation nito. But for me, at the end of the day, it's the story that matters. So... To all you uh, people who are who are just who have just gotten into anime, either for the first time or in a long time, know this: the storyline is all that matters in any form of entertainment. Yeah, I can expect great things from this anime. As a storyline, yah, mong that talagang solid. Uh, I enjoy a good spy thriller uh, once or twice. I, uh, I'll probably have a blast review in this one. Because I the dynamic of the two main protagonists. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy watching them uh, jaw at each other while they, uh, while they're chasing after these Tesla fragments and keeping other spies from, from getting to them. Ito, ng anime to. It's, gonna, it's gonna be one enjoyable one. So again, Tesla Note Episode 1. So we'll just have to do the drill. You, uh, you and me. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. So in the meantime, our lifestyle, enjoy the other reviews in this first digest of volume six. Roll on this vampire hunter in red. So, goes after this vampire known as Dralok. Akala ni Roland 
na kini nangingidnap ng bata si Dralok. So, the first thing he discovered about Dralok was his weakness. Konting blood force trauma, nagiging abo na siya. <laughs> nagiging abo na si Dralok. At the slightest, um, the slightest hint of death, ayun, nagiging, ba- nagiging abo na. <laughs> Dralok even felt victim to 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 his own castle straps in this ano in the in the first half of the episode. Talaga. Hay nako. Eventually nawala lang ba si Dralok all because of Roland. Pero he was able to save the kid. Eh hindi pala nang uh, nangingidap ng bata itong vampire na to. He was He's actually inviting kids over to to play video games with him. Kasi mara uh, big uh, console game aficionado pala ito si Dralok. Pero as the episode went by um naging kumbaga umisquatter na <laughs> kasi wala nang bahay eh. Umisquatter na si Dralok sa opisina. <laughs> ni Roland because Roland has a vampire hunting agency so dumo na siya tumira and someone uh, came in asking for Roland's help so uh, na discover ng ng bagong cliente ito na uy may, may, may sidekick walang vampire ngayon si Roland ano to so inexplain naman ni Roland na uh, after de- uh, ganito after defeating him he, he had a change of heart and he wants to work with me so uh, pari Pani wala pani wala na si itong bagong kliyente so uh, the new client drags both Roland and Dralok to his place of work kasi may hostage situation pala at ang hostage taker ay isang pseudo vampire terminology ng mga vampire hunter story kasi mayro mga uh, vampire na peke mayro mga totoong vampire as the um Uh, as the, as the episode went on as early as uh, the the castle the castle incident sinabi na ni Dralok na maraming klaseng vampires sa mundo okay there are inferior vampires in which the in which the vampire hunters hunt meron din mga superior vampires kasama siya doon pero his weakness is telling Roland otherwise so andito na yung hostage taker ang gusto pa lang ng hostage taker maging ganap na vampire Okay, ganun pala ha, sabi ni Dralok. Sige, pagbibigyan kita. Bigyan naman siya naging apo. Sabi, ko, sabi ni Roland, Uy, teka. You're, 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 you're the moment of glory. Why, 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 pa, 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 bakit ka naging apo? Inexplain, <laughs> inexplain ni Dralok ay ito. He has been having milk for breakfast, lunch, and dinners ever since he, um, Um, ever since uh, he probably woke up talagang woke up at hindi na sanay ang kanyang chan sa dugo lalat sa ganitong lalat ang dugo ay galing sa ganito kabata so so Roland is now stumped ano sa talagang Ano klase ng vampire to na itong to na kasangkutan na kasangkutan ko. Ano ba to? So, but they were able to solve the hostage situation. Ang pinag-ugatan pala ng hostage situation na to ay um binasted siya ng hostage niya. So, inexplain naman din ng ano ng hostage na I'm sorry kasi I'm just trying to be nice to you because you're the manager's son. Aray. <laughs> so, sabi, oh, she just walks away from the convenience store like nothing happened kasi tapos na pala ang shift niya. Eh ngayon, the press caught wind of this. Ayun. Uh, they, they started hounding Roland and Dralok. So, uh, umingi sila ng, ano, ng, ng cyber story. Okay. Final scene. The press now uh, turns its attention to Roland himself. So, tinatanong ngayon ng press, Aba, ano ba to, Roland? Ano ba ngayon ang bagong objective ng vampire hunting agency mo? So, 
Wala pa sa si Roland. Kaya, except this. Something to this effect. We will um we'll take on any job that you got. <laughs> so, essentially, napasubo na si Roland sa vampire na to. Si Dranok. Let's break this episode down AR this time, shall we? Mukhang magan, mukhang kakatawa ang pilot eh. Pace! Umpisa pa lang ng, ay, ng episode. Um, medyo, well, you're, you're up for some laughs. Kasi yung, um, yung pagkakaumpisa ng episode, parang, ba, oh, may, uh, may moment of grandeur pala itong bidang to ah. Tapos, <laughs> he encounters a vampire who's an absolute weakling. And probably the weakest vampire in all of anime right now. A konting, a konting hampas na sa kanya ng pinto, magiging abu na siya. So the pacing will make you realize this one. Kasi, if you're, uh, if, you've been, if you've been watching anime for as long as me, medyo, may expect mo na na, Uy, mukhang... Mukhang ingrande ang anime na to. Tapos biglang, PAK! <laughs> biglang, GRAB! So, the pacing is appropriate enough for this kind of an anime. Although, supernatural siya. May comedy element kasi. Kasi kung babagalan nyo ang pacing ng ganitong classic episode, wala! Makakatulog kayo. Kahit may comic mo, kahit maraming comic moments sa anime na to. Talagang very appropriate ang pacing for this uh for this episode. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift was when Roland discovered Dralok's uh Dralok's biggest weakness. Ayan nga, e, konting hinampasan hinampasan lang niya ng pinto si Dralok. Ayun, naging abo na. <laughs> hindi ba hindi pa naman nakakamatay yun kahit sa ordinaryong tao. Pero in the case of Dralok, he instantly turns to ash. Lagi. Just go. No wonder this anime is entitled The Vampire Dies in No Time. Kaya pala, Mariano. Konting, konting karate chop lang sa ulo niya. Like, uh, like what Roland did in one chase scene wherein uh, Jalog uh, becomes a, uh, a half big bat. Kumbaga, half bat, half humans. Yung lower half niya ay tao pa rin. Diyos ka! Isang karatik sa mga sa kanya ni Ron na nagano sa ulo, naging abo na siya. So, that, that resets himself. So, eh, sinabi nga ni Ron dun eh, Don't treat death like a reset button! <laughs> Grabe! So, that's what this gearship was, um, was, uh, was telling me ganitong ganitong kawik na vampire ang isa sa mga bida <laughs> if you don't call this a twist if you can't call this a twist in the storyline I don't know what will makakalize that right second gear ship was when Dralo decides to um to squat in in Roland's office bakit? bakit kung dinaroon na gear ship to? what? Na wala na kasi ng bahay dahil kay Roland eh. It's the least Roland can do. <laughs> so, this now complicates the relationship. Probably, this will start um, their team up. Kasi, ito na lang na si Dralong eh. Sa so, opisina mismo ni Roland. So, Roland has no choice but to team up with this guy. To team up with this vampire. So, talagang, Napasubo na si Roland. That's what this gearship will tell you. Final gearship was when... Was when... Uh, yes, during the final scene wherein Roland is now being hounded by these two press people. Na, ano bang... Ano bang... Gusto mong gawin ngayon ng vampire hunting agency mo, Roland? Now that you team up with a vampire. So, talaga, it confirms... Uh, what I've been saying all along in this review. Napasubo na talaga si Roland sa vampire na to. So he has no choice but to team up with this vampire. Eh, 
Ang pulog dunon na natin to eh, siya nga mismo nakasunog sa bahay nito eh. Eh, laki ba naman, Castillo? Oh, for just one kid, he, he brought that house down. Literally. <laughs> so, Pollock now has no choice but to to bring this vampire to to every case he has. So, these three years, I tell you, mga lifestyle, has Um, triggered this entire anime. Kaya ako tinawag na gearship dito. Itong tatlong to. Plotwise. Malinis. Talagang yung continuity ng, yung main continuity ng episode talagang nasunod. Because, despite the funny moments, well, the funny moments are actually part, uh, part of the main continuity of this episode. Kaya, malinis ang plot. Malinis ang plot. Talagang masusundan mo yung yung takbo ng storya no side stories no back stories whatsoever kasi yung pinaka origin ng team up nila ay yun ang unang tinaken in which the main continuity of the episode started pretty pretty basic ah uh, pretty basic plot pero malinis so pace flow and plot I almost did not distinguish one from the other. Ganong kalinis ang episode na to. Ganong kalinis na pilot ito. So, we can expect great, great things from this anime. Talagang, if this isn't a comedy anime to you, I don't know what is. You would be, yung, the dynamic between uh, Dralok and Roland, matatawa ka talaga. <laughs> Talagang asahan mo, may funny moments na mangyayari. So, The Vampire Dies in No Time, Episode 1? Nisip pa. Nakakatawa nga. Nakakatawa pilot nga eh. Oh! What's up, sir? Excuse me. So, what should we, what should we expect from this anime? What? Number 1. Comic moments. Then, Pilot pa lang, sinetop na tayo eh. Tapos, yung, of course, the dynamic between Dralok and Roland. Dralok, uh, Dralok is a vampire, and Roland is a vampire hunter. So, kumbaga, yung awareness and knowledge of vampires ni Dralok will probably serve Roland well. Kasi, Although he's already published a book on his vampire hunting exploits, having Dralok by his side, mukong lalo siyang sisikat eh. Lalo siyang magiging magaling na vampire hunter. Because he now has a vampire for a sidekick. Probably, like I said a while ago mga ka-lifestyle, probably the weakest Wimpiest vampire in all of anime right now. <laughs> Talagang grabe. Isang simple blood force trauma lang. Huwag <laughs> magiging abo na siya. <laughs> Lamamatay siya agad. He's not weak a vampire. And his his digestive system is no is probably no longer accustomed to human blood. Kaya nat natawa talaga ako sa scene yun eh, when He was um he when he bit the hostage taker kasi talagang pagbibigyan niya gusto maging vampire o sige nagat na rito and bigla siya naging abo <laughs> Kung baga, yung ganong ka yung ganong ka purong dugo hindi na kumbaga lason na sa digestive system niya kaya siya namatay kaga kaya siya naging abo so what the fuck <laughs> Ang daming WTF moments sa pilot na to. So, we can only expect comic moments and of course, uh, adventure sa anime na to. So, we now know the reason why it's called The Vampire Dies in No Time. So, Madhouse, you've done it again, guys. Kahit pilot pa lang. Pero, I'm not going to keep my hopes up. This is only the pilot. So, We're going to 
We're going to expect a lot of things from this one because it is from Madhouse. You know what I'm going for now. So again, the Vampire Dies in No Time, Episode One. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up for this anime, and another two thumbs up for Madhouse Manga Lifestyle. Title of the next episode has been teaser, pero na unang teaser sa post credits. <laughs> First time I've seen this. Okay? Probably in a long time. Kakaiba ang ginawa ng Madhouse dito. So, they switched from uh, the ultra serious Sunny Boy to this one. So, I'll, I'll just be expecting great things from this one since it is from Madhouse. Kaya, don't trust the teaser. We'll just have to wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this first digest of all your shows. Let me, let me, let me run it down a bit, okay? So, what happened here, obviously, the main protag is with his team uh, na pinakita sa opening credits they were um, yeah obviously they were doing a job so meron sila meron pinatutubas sa kanila parang um, bugaw this lady is pimping uh, young girls na, di, na that they were taking from from the village they from the villages they burned down in order to be sold to um, dirty and dubious old men for to the uh, to, actually to the highest bidder kasi the way I see it it's a members only auction kasi naka naka nakamaskara yung mga bidders so um, some of them uh, one of them is crying syempre she, she doesn't uh, she doesn't want to be sold who wants to be sold ba? dalawa pala sa ibibid na babae kasali sa team ng main pro tag well, they started they started wreaking havoc. Yun. Then until such time na uh, this this lady pimp was uh, medyo in the main protag sites. To yung mismo pinatutumba sa kanila. Then all of a sudden it switches to modern timeline na assassin din. The way I see it, it's the main protag uh went on backstory mode to the time he was to the time when he was on this plane of reality eh ito yung ito yung siguro yung siya itong siya siguro itong matandang assassin na to um they were doing a job along with a novice assistant and after doing the job sineto niya yung trust issues ng kasama niya uh, they went back to their handler uh, through online through through a laptop sinabi ng handler nila na well doon sa sa main pro tag you're now free to retire so ito na magiging pangalan nyo oh ito yung uh, itong pangalan ng kasama mo ito pang- well they, they they've been given fake passports pala and uh and a ticket plane ticket US passports so they were on this plane now uh, akala ng ng main protag na uh, malaya na siyang uh, gumawa ng well, stop what he wants to do until nakita niya sa balita na hinahijack na pala yung aeroplanong sinasakyan niya so he, he checked on the pilots pumunta siya sa cabin ayun meron yung yung flight panel sabog so kumbaga uh, he quickly deduced that the organization that uh, that uh, that made him retire wants him dead. Sila ang migawa nito. And sinabi rin niya sa kasama niyang novice na na pina pina ano na rin, pina quit na rin na they are capable of doing this. Ayun. So merong merong jet fighter na na sumulubog sa sa airline na nasa nasa kanila na akala ng ibang passengers na hinostage na 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 hinijack na they were instantly shot down ayun patay ang main protag then he suddenly wakes up to this 
uh, to this um to this bright fantasy world wherein he meets uh, the goddess Ahem. Parang <coughs> parang dating eh. So yung kaluluwa pala niya kinuha pala ni kinuha pala ni Ahem. He was offered a deal. Either he goes back to the living world as a baby with no recollection whatsoever of his um, his past experiences. Talagang totally different person or ilalagay siya rito sa isang mundo full of that's full of magic and sorcery. Na retain ng memories niya. So, medyo iniinggan yung ni Ahem na na pakagatin dito sa main protag dun sa second option. So, well, the main protag is smart enough to know na may catch ito. So, diniretsa niya si Ahem. Tanong niya, What's in it for you? Kaya pala, gustong ipapili ni Ahem dito sa main protag yung second option because meron siyang gustong ipapatay dito. The hero of that world. That was the final scene. So, let's break this episode down ARD style. Pace. First two thirds of the episode, tense. Pero action pa. Eh, hindi po kasi sinabi kong tense. Um, medyo morbid, medyo scary. Uh, so, I have to describe it. Action pa kasi. Dahil, uh, in the scene where the main protag is in this magical world, he also holds a gun. Kaya pala, in the real world where he where he was still living, he too holds a gun because he is the world's finest assassin. So talagang uh, in even in his even in his lingo, his language, talagang assassin siya. He brought that to this uh, to this fantasy world that Ahem sent him to. So kumbaga, ito siguro yung pina pinatatrabaho sa kanila muna. But the pacing also made me realize this. How did he come up with this team? Siguro, he explain us our future episodes. Yan. Kaya, that's understandable. For a pilot with such a backstory sequence, uh, with such a, such a backstory, bottom line, ano eh? You couldn't count out the backstory uh, in this pilot. Kasi, Ito yung pinaka-origin story ng main protag. Kumbaga, um, how he lived his life, how his life was ended, so unceremoniously, ah. <laughs> unceremoniously, and how his soul was um, dragged by Ahem into this, into this fantasy world. Eh kaya pala, may, may basic interest pala sa kanya, si Ahem, itong, itong Diyosang to. Meron palang gusto ipatumba sa kanya. The pacing will also make you realize that this is an easy guy anime. Okay lang yung pacing. Okay lang. Despite having, um, well, probably one of the most exciting backstories I have, uh, I've ever seen this year. Now, flow naman. First gear shift was actually, uh, the time when, the time during the main protag's last job. Yung kumbaga nag-transition siya from the from delivering the fatal shot to this uh, to this lady pimp to modern timeline I it's obvious it's a gear shift kasi nasa main continuity ka tapos bigla ka nag back story that's why I called it a gear shift simply it's plain and simple clear as day so second and final gear shift that I saw was when uh, was when the when the plane him and his novice was on was brought down by the organization that uh, that nurtured him for years that turned him into the world's finest assassin kasi well bakit mo tinawag na gear shift? simple lang uh, assassin ka eh ang dami mong nalalaman kung kung criminal organization ka sigurado ipatutumba mo na ito masyadong maraming nalalaman ang tungkol sa organisasyon mo so, if fate hadn't interfered, hindi siya mapupunta sa mundo ng mga ng magic or ano eh. 
So that, that's why I, that's another reason why I called it a gear shift. Because, for well, another reason, this gear shift actually triggers the entire anime. Hindi yung opening scene. Not that. Not even the time when uh, he did his last job. No. This was the scene that triggered this entire anime. That's the way I see it. So these two gear shifts that I saw, natural. Natural na sinabi ko nina for the final gear shift. This will play a role down the line in this anime. Yung uh, pagkaapatay sa kanya ng, org ng organization na yun. Plot-wise, Kachado. Because, you, you only have two sequences to deal with it. The, um, the current timeline in the anime, which was the opening scene, the opening sequence, and of course, the entire backstory sequence, which took up practically two-thirds of the episode. Siguro, well, you need to, you need to iron up uh, a plot like this kasi para siguro ang call ng Silver Link dito yeah Silver Link is Silver Link is one of the studios para may pakita mo sa audience kung ano ang buhay ng main protagonist ngayon compared sa buhay niya noon sa plane of reality natin but still he's still an assassin eh, whether whether he's in the real world or in this magical world. Assassin pa rin siya. So, dala-dala pa rin niya yun. Kaya, um, uh, it's, well, common lang yung pagka, yung pagka-iron out ng mga ganitong episodes. Eh. So, it's, it's a good iron out. It's a good iron out plot. Medyo, para medyo, para medyo get. So, Pace, flow, and plot They came together for this episode Kaya I could not say it's One of the best pilots Of, uh, of Fall Kasi I haven't reviewed the rest of the lineup yet As of this recording Pero It's, uh, it's a good one It's a good one Kasi uh, Maganda yung Pagkaka-iron out ng plot the Plot actually uh, carried this episode kasi pinakita yung current situation ng anime tapos biglang uh, in a split second biglang napunta dito sa origin story ng main protag yeah, yeah you have to be a really you have to be really good at that to uh, to make it into one episode yeah ayos Aisa. so on Satsu Kizoku episode 1 Ang tamap lang. Bakit? What? Hindi ako satisfied sa, ano yan? Sa, on how the episode turned out. Yung, hindi, not, not, uh, not the final scene, but the transition between the main continuity to the backstory. Kasi, binitin mo yung, ano eh, Kung ano yung talagang nangyari. Ano, ano ba talagang... Did the main protag actually put a bullet through that lady pimp's head? Tapos bigla... Tapos... Um, siguro... Maybe Silver Link... Uh, should have done it like this. Ito yung suggestion ko lang. They could have done it like... Um, after the mission... Successful kill... Doon! Nag... Doon biglang nag... Doon biglang... Uh, Nag-back story Ang episode Ang pilot Yun, pwede yun Kasi We've, we've uh, seen That side of him In this magical world Now we're, we're about to see The origin story Kung bakit siya Ganong agaling na sniper so, Hindi parang ano eh Parang Bigla Yung The main product Is about to deliver The, the final The final shot Tapos bigla kang nag-transition to backstory. Parang... Uh, they could have done more. 
Silverlink could have done more. Mas maganda kasi yung ano eh, yung ni-resolve mo muna yung itong situation na to. Did the main protag um, carry out his mission of uh, of assassinating this lady pimp? Dapat niya makita yon. Kasi sigurado it's going to be a really exciting scene. It's going to be a really satisfying scene considering kung ano yung ano yung illegal activities ng babaeng ito. Then um after um siguro the rest of his team are celebrating the the success of the mission, siya naman he could have uh went back to could have contemplated over his uh his origin story. Yan, doon papasok na yung back story. You know, for me, yun ang magandang transition. Hindi yung uh, in a split second biglang andito na. Pumuti sana kung uh, same continuity pero magkaibang mission pero uh, magkaibang mission. On one mission, he did this. The other mission, he did uh, he did the same thing here. Pero hindi. Biglang backstory agad eh. He could have content. He could have um, went into contemplation mode in order for the backstory to begin. Yon, yon, yun ang magand, yun ang para sa akin yun ang magandang transition. Kaya I I got a I got a problem with the transition between the main continuity and the backstory. Kaya one thumb up lang. But there's always room for improvement. Kasi it's only the pilot. It's still a good episode. Kaya. So again, on Saksu Kizoku episode 1. One time up. One time up lang. Sorry. Kai pilot. I have to be fair. Pilot of the next episode has been teasered. Hmm. What was I mean? Backstory parin. Pero, I don't want to trust the title yet. It's, it's only a teaser Kasi title only teaser lang So We'll just have to do the The drill mga lifestyle We will wait for next week And watch that episode So In the meantime Enjoy the other reviews in this night Let me give you a rundown Of the, uh, the episode there's this guy named Tadano who met this uh, this really pretty girl named Komi. She's known as the the school Madonna. Kasi ganun siya kaganda. But may na, may na notice siyang uh, kakaiba rito kay Komi. She always communicates through writing. It's the first day of school. Nagtawag siya ng, ano, ng, roll, ng roll call ang class advisor nila. Nauna si Tadano. Kasi mag magkatabi lang sila Then it was Komi's turn Lumabi pa si Komi sa blackboard Para isulat yung pangalan niya And She went back to her table To her desk Doon talaga napansin ni Ni Tata no Right before the next uh, The next class uh, Yun uh, Tiranong na niya kay Komi Do you have a uh, problem com Communicating with people? So, uh, so to that effect, yun ang tanong niya kay Komi. And Komi just wrote away. So, explain niya. I'm having a hard time talking to people. And, sabi niya, naka, something to this effect, nakakaingit yung mga pinag-uusapin nila about, about the weather, about the next class, about their crushes. Naiingit daw siya. And um, she was about to dispel uh, Tadano's attention. And then, so, biglang, ayun, sinunod lang ni Tadano yung kanyang point of view on all this. So, na-realize niya that Komi has a communication disorder. So, wow, I, I couldn't believe na Ang kantang babae mas may communication disorder, but it does happen, even to the most beautiful of us. So they were off to a um, exchange of 
words through the blackboard and I thought it was mm, this is a beautiful moment so and yeah uh, sinabi na rin ni Komi that she has a goal of meeting 100 friends in this school kasi paro silang ano eh paro silang senior sa high school eh sinabi na sinabi na lang ni Tata no well I'm your first so sinabi na rin ni Tata no na I'll help you get 99 more Pro- that's probably where this entire anime will kick off you know, that at that moment final scene it's actually a pros- post credit uh, I think it's literature class I say they're they're reciting an excerpt from a book so see Tada no una tinawag so he proceeded with his uh, with his own uh, his own take tapos si tinawag na ng instructor si Komi wala, wala kayo may imig si Komi kasi we all Tadona is well aware of, his, of her disorder now so hindi niya ma-recite yung next excerpt na she couldn't pick up where Tadona had left off with the book so well, and out of the blue sinabi na lang instructor ang galing <laughs> pa- sabi ko para na yung para na yung magaling hindi nga nakapag-recite nung klaseng teacher to <laughs> That, 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 that's a, that was a real funny moment. Since this is the pilot of this anime, we're going to break it down as much uh, as detailed as possible. ARD style. Now, base. I just realized that uh, the real star of this show is the communication disorder Komi has. And I'm your guys. Communication disorders actually exist. Meron talaga. Some are born out of trauma. Some are are born with it. But I think the worst here is um, probably due to a traumatic experience that Komi couldn't communicate that well. Siya na mismo nagsabi sa exchange of words nila ni, ni Tadano. That... Um, She's probably giving uh, the wrong impression to to everybody in the school that um, uh, maganda siya pero is nabera siya that um, she's that hard to talk to she's not that approachable pero I think Tadano is slowly seeing through that pilot pa lang the pacing will make you realize that kasi kung O ubusin mo sa funny moments ang pace ng episode na to. People will find it corny. People will find it boring. There are some people who are who think that way. I'd say the pacing is um deliciously slow. Kasi the real elephant in the room is Komi's communication disorder. Talagang Tadonok has his work cut out for him if he if he re- if he really wants to make Komi talk, nakita niya naman sa 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 akala niyo uh, final scene na say let's be friends sabi ni uh, ni Tata no and Komi just went <laughs> she really has a problem letting the words come out of her mouth. I think this is the general mentality of the of the school they're in. I say. Uh, maganda si Komi pero not approachable because akala nila siguro na she doesn't want to talk to people deliberately but no there is something wrong with her so the pacing will absolutely make her realize that kaya sakto lang ang pacing sa ganitong klaseng episode flow naman first gear shift here was when Komi and Tadano uh, met for the first time. <laughs> I don't know why why I got those Jojo feels when 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 these two first met. Cause Tadano couldn't make of uh, how to how to talk to this really beautiful girl and call me with the disorder that she that she has. 
just couldn't um, let the words come out of her mouth kasi nag good morning sa kanya si Tata Norito and hindi niya maibalik yung good morning vocally so oh my god <laughs> I thought okay hmm this girl has a problem <laughs> wow second gear shift was when Tadano blurted out the question something to this effect again do you have a problem uh, talking to people kung baga diniretsa na siya ni ni Tadano in this gear shift why did I call these two moments gear shifts well simply lang mga ka lifestyle it set us up for what lies ahead in this anime yun lang final gear shift was when Tadano tried to um, tried to help Komi actually talk the first time yung ano nga, uh, let's be friends the let's be friends moment yeah she was she was that close to opening her mouth na and, and letting some words out <laughs> it's gonna be a long road ahead for Tadano and uh, did you see the uh, part of that scene where in but the school they're in it's a really prestigious school if you don't have well, the overall again the overall mindset of the school is if you don't have talent tae ka sa eskwela hang to Komi uh, communicating what she wants to communicate will be a really tough job for Tadano and that's what this gear shift will make you realize kaya nga tinawag kong gear shift ito so we now know what 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 actually lies ahead for the two main protagonists in this anime <clears throat> these three gear shifts i repeat has already set the tone for this anime's run plot wise malinis because well bottom line should you should you tackle a backstory right now? This is the pilot of the episode. It won't make sense kung lalagyan mo ng uh, lalagyan mo ng backstory or side story ang ang ganitong klaseng episode. It won't make sense. So, pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this pilot. And I can say right now, we can expect nothing but good vibes from this anime kasi um, ngayon pa lang alam na natin kung ano ang ang kailangan punuin ni ni Tadalo when it comes to Komi so right now he is the only one that understands Komi's issues that the entire school is yet to discover so we can say that there will be ridicule uh huh 99% there will be uh, there will probably be a few more people who will understand common situation probably so comic can communicate episode 1 thumbs up nga pero walang mic drop I'll tell you why kasi I'm still apprehensive as how um, of how this anime story will run because well, I'm no weeb I am no normie I don't base an entire anime just on one episode like uh, like probably the rest of you watching this one Hindi pa ako ganun ka-confident na bigyan ng mic drop ito to, to solidify the two thumbs up. Yeah, well, if you find the, uh, if you find the anime pleasing enough on its first episode, good for you.
but I'm only judging this episode by its own merits. Kaya, two thumbs up pa rin. So again, Comic Can Communicate, episode 1. So, wow. In the tradition of uh, uh, last anime seasons, uh, roster members like Sunny Boy, Tokyo Revengers. Oh, the current, uh, its current uh, co-member, Fena Pirate Princess, and Night Dead 2041. No teasers. Well, after all, it's the pilot, so. You wouldn't really expect any teasers at all. Kasi, kailangan, uh, ngayon pa lang, i-build up the suspense na. Yeah, this is for people. So, malalaman na namin talaga kung trend ang, sa anime na to, ang hindi mo bagay ng teasers after, probably after the third episode. So, let's just do the gym, mga kalista. We will wait for next week and watch the next episode. Yeah, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this first digest of Volume 6. Ooh! So, our episode starts with a um, conference between two families, the Asakuras and the, and the Taos. So, yung pamilya ni, ni Layo at Hao at ang pamilya ni Ren. Nagkaroon kasi ng request from from Yo's mom na na kung pwede turuan ang team ni Ren ng Ultra Senji Ryaketsu. Ni-request niya sa pinaka-patriarch ng Tao family yung 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 maliit na matanda. Parang na pa, na parang si ano rin eh, parang si yung lolo ni Yo, parang ganoon ang dating niya. So, pumayag ang pumayag ng matanda. Pero, ang nag-object yung tatay mismo ni Ren. He thinks the, uh, the Ultra Senji Ryaketsu is bullshit. At ang sabi pa niya, Ren is the ultimate product of the Tao family's 1800-year history. Ganon daw katibay na mandirigma si Ren. In light of this, he challenges Yo's father, si Mikihisa, to, well, to, to battle. While this was going on, nag-uusap sila, sila, tawag dito, sila, Yo, Ana, tsaka si Manta. Eh, they were, they were, uh, they were talking about the technology the Patch Tribe has in gauging uh, Furyoku or Mana. O nga, um, Yo is a bit apprehensive kasi ang, Ang Furyoko ni Hao nasa 1.25 million. Yeah, you see that? You see? The... <laughs> so, sabi nga ni, sabi nga ni Mante. Okay. Kahit isang dang yo pa ang sumagu pa kay Hao, it's not enough. So, agree naman si yo. And, he, Mante even suggested na kung kung pwede natin i-gather lahat ng competitors ng Shaman Fight just to just to kill how sa amin ni ni Yo it still won't be enough ang point kasi ni Yo there is this kahit alam na natin lahat na si Hao ang mananalo sa tournament na to we still have to uh, work hard on our own skills on our own beliefs and uh, on our own goals if we become the if uh, if any one of us becomes the shaman king parang ganun yung gusto niya iparating kila Anat Manta now while this was going on naman um team the Ren <laughs> bakit woo oh when I mention Ren's uh, team name, talaga, pa, 
Eh, ako baka natutuligan tayo ako eh. But anyway, so, while they were, um, I think they were going out for a walk, si, si, si Ren, si Horhoro, at si Chocolove, someone uh, calls them out, si Mikihisa. Mikihisa is now approaching Team The Ren and personally uh, wants to mentor them with regards to the Ultra Senji Ryaketsu. Well, it's obvious he won over Ren's father, thereby proving his point, which was shown in in one particular sequence. Talagang, wow! Ren's father is down for the count. Talagang, bug bug sar obvious bug bug sarado siya sa airpack niyo. So he proceeded to walk. Uh, uh, Talagang ganito. Ren will have none of that. What? Sabi lang ni Mikihisa. You wanna prove your point? Come at me. So, ang uno sumugod, si Ren. Eventually, his own arrogance got the better of him. He was... Wow. I have never seen Ren this beaten up before. He's a bloody mess. Talagang masasabi mo na na bug-bug sarado siya kay Mikihisa. Final scene. Makikialam na si Horo Horo at nagsi-second... Nagsi na Uh, nag-aalangan na rin si Chocolove kung makikailan din siya pero Horo Horo is now ready for the fight sinabi ni Ren I am not wavering ooh ano ba Ren tumigil ka na <laughs> baka mapatay ka lang ng, tiyan, ng tatay niyo bahala ka so, so let's break this down ARD style <clears throat> teka kukonditioning ko muna sarili ko ay tala ko Pace. First, um, first one part of the episode. Hindi ano eh? Kung baga usap usap ng dalawang pamilya, simply um, there's uh there's some to call this backdoor politics, if you if you may, na nangyayare. I thought, why did why did Shaman King start so slow in this episode? Pero The moment na naghamon ang tatay ni Ren, si Mapangalon. I, 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 for, I, I forgot. I, I already forgot his name because that was so long. That was, I think, um, 16 or 17 episodes ago. Nung tanda ko yung pangalan niya. The moment Ren's father challenged Yo's father to a fight, sabi ko na ko po. Ano ba to? Muko magkakasagupan dalawang ama. Lo and behold, ayun nga, pinakita sa isang sequence na tinalo ni Mikihisa ang tatay ni Ren. Not only did he just beat Ren's father, he, Ren's father looks like a bloody mess. <laughs> Ren's father's head is, has now become part of a wall. <laughs> Talaga, Mikihisa actually made short work of, uh, of this guy. So, eto ngayon ang pinapakita niya kay Ren mismo. <laughs> Dalawang beses niyang dinikdik sa pavement ang ulo ni Ren. Grabe! And wow, the pace will make you realize how um how tense the situation is. Which is just right. Wala akong reklamo. <laughs> Because this is Shaman King on a whole new level. I could not remember this particular seen from the OG series. Wala akong matanda ang ganitong eksena sa sa original series. Wala. Talagang it's the first time I've seen it. Grabe. You really need to uh, you really need to have a fast pacing for this episode. Kasi Mickey Hisa needs to prove his point that the Ultra Senji Ryaketsu is a really powerful technique. He has proven that to Ren's father And now, he's trying to knock it into Ren's, Ren's head. Figuratively and literally. <laughs> and the pacing will make you realize that. Flo naman. First gear shift was when Ren's father challenged Mikihisa. Bakit? The Tao family basically thinks that the Ultra Senjiria Ketsu is a useless technique. Pero, Mikihisa... Disprove that, ano, disprove that notion. Right there. Through, eh, 
Hindi hindi naman si Miki sana kamo ni. Yung tatay ni Ren eh. So, Miki hisa obliged. Binigyan. Mm. Talo. Tatay ni Ren. So, pero I think if you look at that, if you look at that gear shift, parang um naniniwala na yung 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 matandang tao na talagang malakas sa technique ito. Because for I'm very sure, okay, Mickey Hisa is using it. Yo is using it. Si Ryunosuke, si Faust, they just proven that in their last match. Na hindi hindi basta basta ang technique ng Ultra Senjiria Ketsu. And again, of course, Yo's father proved that here in this episode. And he's he, he's proving he actually proved it twice <laughs> in this episode. That's what this gear ship will tell you. Final gear ship, dalawa na talaga. Was actually um the final scene. Bakit ko tinawag na gear ship? Kasi It just goes to show you how how psychologically weak Ren is. Kasi he vowed never to doubt again. Pero sabi ni sabi ni Miki Hisa in this episode, without doubt there's no there's no growth. He's got a point. Because for me, doubt is the basis of all education. Bakit? Yeah. Siyempre, if you decided to to do something, do something new, there will be doubt. But, if you dispel that doubt while you're doing it, doubt is immediately erased. And you have now learned something. Tama ba ako mga ka-lifestyle? That's what this gear ship will make you learn. <laughs> Sabi niya, well, sabi ni, sabi nga ni Rendon, I will not waver. It means he wants to keep up the fight. I don't know if uh, Ren is being arrogant here or is being plain stupid. Or, yeah, prob probably a little bit of both. Kasi, masyado kasi mataas ang pride ng, ng, ng mukitong to eh. <laughs> That's Ren. Even in the OG series, he has that B minor. Pero mas matindi di rito. <laughs> mas pronounced yung, yung, yung pride niya rito. Yeah. He hates losing. Much less to an, much less to an Asakura. Eh, well, <laughs> Miki Hisa is, has just turned him into a bloody mess. Sabi nga ni Miki Hisa rito, Surrender is your best option right now. <laughs> Something to that effect. So, these gear shifts that I saw definitely will play a role in future episodes. Eh, where are we now? We just capped the first half of this of this reboot's run. 52 episodes po ang Shaman King reboot. We're now halfway through. Episode 26 na po eh. Plot-wise, Blanchado? Bakit? Kung meron mga side story dito, it's uh, it's that sequence where basta pinakita na lang na talo ang tatay ni Ren sa tatay ni Yo. Kasi, kung tinalo ng tatay ni Ren si Miki Hisa, he will be showing up in uh, in in Ren's face. Hindi siya magpapakilala. Pero, it was so quick you wouldn't even care to notice. Ganun lang kaikli yung yung side uh, sequence na yun. So, pero planchado pa rin yung plot kasi you will need to uh, decide where to cinch that in. Yung pagkakasinch in ng sequence na yun, wow! I thought, hmm, okay. So, Wow. <laughs> Kawawa tatay ni Ren. <laughs> That's what the plot will make you realize. Alright, so, it's a well-ironed out plot. Kasi, isa lang yun eh. Isang, isang side story lang yung 
pinakita doon eh. At ang ganda pa ng pagkaka pasok sa nang nang eksena ng yun. So you can therefore conclude that this episode had a well ironed out plot. So face flow and plot they all came together for this episode. Talagang In the opening, uh, the first two scenes, uh, you could you could not understand the slowness. Pero sabi ko, ooh, mukong makakasubok ka ng dalawang elpata. Ah. Ayun. Nikisa <laughs> just turned him into a bloody mess, thereby proving that the Ultra Sejiri Aketsu is needed by Team Doren. Kaya nagpositi na si Nikihisa na magturo sa tatlong to. Then, despite all this, Yo is not worried. <laughs> Yo is not worried about uh, about Ren and the others. So, Summer King 2021, episode 26. Isi pa ako. Ganda ng episode eh. Oh. Two thumbs up! I don't know why... Uh, why the Tao family should resolve uh, everything through violence? Okay. <laughs> Sinabi na nga, I don't know why Ren's father didn't take uh, the Asakura's word for it. Na the Ultra Senjiri Aketsu is is probably their best chance at suppressing how if they can teach this to enough shamans. So, sure, ang inunin nila ang pamilya ni Ren kasi close naman sila close naman sila Ren at Kyo eh, right now although they're they're captaining different teams pero all the same they, they all belong to Yo's inner circle kaya kaya siguro uh, ni request na, na magulang nila Yo at How na i-approach ang Tao family to arrange a meeting with them kaya eh, pumakit naman yung matandang Tao eto namang Tatay thinks it's all BS. Ayun. <laughs> I guess he, I guess he believes in it now. And did you see how Nikihisa is manhandling Ren? I only saw him use his oversoul only once. Ganong katindi kasi kinwento na rin ni Yo dito eh. His father is an ascetic. Ever since um, uh, Yo got uh, how got away when they were born, uh, talagang Nikisa held himself accountable for for what happened. So talagang hindi tumigil sa pagtitraining until he's already at a breaking point. He was already he already con- conquered the highest mountain on earth just to atone for his sins. I don't, I don't think you can call that a sin, kasi. <laughs> Mapi, mapipigilan nyo ba yun? That's evil incarnate being reborn So It came to a point now Na ganun kalakas na ngayon Ang tatay ni, ni Yo That He doesn't uh, He's He doesn't need to use his oversoul that much I only saw again. I only saw Mikihisa use his oversoul once. Yun lang nung siguro he was trying to draw out Ren's oversoul. Kung may kung mayroon pa siyang bago. Ayun na, yung Bushin. Grabe, nakakatakot. Nakakatakot ay jure. It's a spear, pero it consists of different different weapons from Chinese history. Kaya kung ordinaryo kang sama, matatakot ka rito eh. Pero, not Mikihisa. So, wala, puro, puro iwas na siya until such time na, POK! Sini, tinuhod niya sa sigmura si Ren. Sabay, PAK! Sabay, elbow shot, tabatok na ganun. That's it. Grabe! It's the first time I've ever seen Ren getting manhandled like this. Wow! Brutal! Yeah. Nikihisa is literally taking Ren's head off. 
<laughs> Obes nagdinigdik ang ulo. So, unang beses sa pavement, pangalawa dun sa sa beam ng tulay. That was the, which was part of the final scene. Talagang, wow. This is the kind of fight scene you can only see in Shaman King. Ito yun. It's the Shaman King brand of fight scene. Kaya, pwede nga na sabihin after 26 episodes that the reboot is better than the original. Ako na nagsasabi sa inyo because I've I'm also a fan of the original series back in uh, it was first aired in 2000-2001 Napanood ko rin yun Sinubaybayan ko yun sa Channel 7 AGMA <laughs> So, sinubaybayan ko yun And right now in the reboot 26 episodes in Again, I am telling you everybody Not just sa mga ka-lifestyle ko The Shaman King reboot is better than the original series Talagang Alatang alatang mo That Studio Bridge Is following the manga to the letter Because I've uh, I've heard from uh, Long time Summon King fans Yung tipong Manga days pa Ganito ro na, Ganito ro Ka-violent ang manga Ng Summon King Medyo sanitized na nga ro Yung original series But <laughs> During those times Uso sanity Usong sanitization sa anime right? Best examples are Shaman King And Like it or not Higurashi So What are we gonna do? Hindi! Hindi na lang natin ang next episode we're, going, we're about to enter the second half of the run So 26 episodes Naka 6 na buwan na tayo <laughs> And it's fun I am having a blast critiquing um, this reboot. Talagang, sabi sa inyo, it's better than the original. So again, Shaman King 2021, episode 26. You can go. So, what does that have to do with your lifestyle? Ayoko na mo. Ayoko na magbanggit pa ako sa teaser niya. Hindi naman ako naniniwala sa teaser eh. What is that to wait for next week? And watch that episode. Kaya, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this inaugural digest of Volume 6. So, we start the, we start the pilot with, um, probably, yeah, the, the main protag, si... Mirai Kakiyashi, I uh, hope I pronounced it correctly, he tried to kill himself by jumping off a building. Then all of a sudden, he finds himself flying. Eh, ito pa namang araw na ito, ang araw ng graduation niya from senior high. Eh, he basically did not attend his graduation just to kill himself. Malalim pa na pinag-uugutan nitong si Mirai. He has been abused by his um, foster family comprising of his uncle tapos yung asawa niya and of course his cousins eh ang sumalba pala ka, sa kanya is his guardian angel meron pala siya ngayon ang pangalan niya ay Nase so explain lang ni Nase kung uh, kung sino siya at kung ano ang kinalaman niya sa buhay ni Mirai yung pala he's uh, Mi, na, Nase has been um, watching over Mirai since he was a kid. So, alam niya lahat. Alam pala niya na ang tunay na pumatay sa pamilya ni, pamilya ni Mirai ay ang mismo uncle niya. Bakit? The insurance money. Okay, mukha. Eh, tarantado palang putang inang hayop na to eh. Pina, pinapatay niya ang, pinatay niya ang pamilya ni Mirai just to get the insurance money. Eh, ano yata, web, well-to-do, galing sa well-to-do family si Mirai. And, by adopting Mirai, uh, makiklaim niya ng maayos at legal ang insurance money. Well, he accomplished it. Sinabi niyang, kinimento lahat ng ito ni Nasi kay Mirai. Hindi makapaniwala si Mirai. Akala niya kasi, basta lang may, basta lang lang sumabog yung kotse. Kasi, nilagyan ng car bomb. Nilagyan ng bomba sa kotse. Once na, 
pinindot yung ignition key, sasabog na. That, that, that's, how, that's how car bombs work, actually. Nawala nang, na, lalo na wala nang gana sa buhay si Mirai. But, Nase gave him powers that are, wow, beyond human comprehension. Kasi ang primary goal lang ni Mirai sa buhay is to be happy. Special rank angel kasi si Nase. Gave him the power of flight and um, the ability to use two special arrows. A red arrow for make, for compelling people and a white arrow for instantly killing them. Sounds familiar. The, does the formula sound familiar, mga kalaistan? Mamaya. Let's, let's tackle that one. Ang unang sinagest ni Nase para, well, para, ma, para ma-test ni Mira yung ganyang bagong kapangyarihan is on on her on his aunt yung asawa ng uncle niya if you can if you can use the red arrow on her she will spill all the beans kasi at that point hindi naniniwala si Mirai na magagawa ng uncle niya yung ganun well so he went back home kinumpronta niya ang aunt, ang auntie niya ginamitan niya ng red arrow ayun Nagsabi ng totoo. Pero, um, what? The red arrow also has another, another use. If you want some, if you want someone to fall in love with you, you can also use this arrow. Ayun. <laughs> I found it creepy. Pero, ang kabutihan lang nito, uh, his auntie spilled all the beans. Talagang sinabi niya ang buong katotohanan. His uncle comes into the room. Ayun. He starts beating his own wife. Bigla na lang sinabi ni Mirai na, you, Both of you are the ones who should die. His auntie suddenly grabs a huge kitchen knife and stabs herself in the neck. Patay! <laughs> Ang sabi niya, Tanong niya, bakit? Tinanong niya kinasin, Bakit ako? Bakit ako ganito to? Well, Nancy had a simple answer for that. You compelled her to kill your you compelled her to kill herself. Sinabi mo kasi, both of them should die. Ayun. <laughs> Ganun lang kasi simple 'yun. He left the place. Sempre. Um he eventually used the um the red arrow to 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 grab a place to stay muna and um well, uh, get some get something to eat. Sinabi na rin niya kay Nasi that he can't do this uh, for too long. Okay. He needs work. He needs money to to live on his own. Final scene. Nasabi kasi ni Nase that there are other there are other people like him. May powers na ganon. Meron ding angels na kasama. They are called God candidates. So, labing tatlo sil. I think labing tatlo silang lahat. And we learning na sa ninase that eventually he will meet all of them. So, ang kaya para din ako sila mga God candidates because uh, amongst the thirteen, one will be chosen as the new God. Ooh, ano tong pinasok mo? Let's break this episode down, ARD style. Base, kasi. Um, pumigap lang ang pace during that scene wherein uh, Mirai's aunt killed herself. Dun lang. Pero um, the sequences before that hindi naman masyado eh. Talagang napatunayan lang ng, ng pace ng episode that these powers actually work. Hindi pa lang nagagamit ni Mirai yung white arrow which causes instant death in people. Hindi pa lang niya nagagamit 'yon. Parang ano lang 'yan eh. Parang uh, ang suggestion lang kasi ni Nase doon, gamitin lang 'yon for mercy killing. To to you for nice sabak ng yare. Ah, uh, grabe na sakit. Um, talaga ang prognosis eh hindi na mabubuhay na matagal 'to. Hmm. Gamitin ng white arrow para matapos ang paghihirap niya. Ganun lang 'yon. Ganun yung premise sa paggamit noon. So, well, that's what the pacing made me realize. The slowness of this pilot 
is acceptable. Bakit? Kasi, it's a sort of a feeling out episode for the main protag. Kasi, katatanggap lang niya ng kapangyarihan na to. So, if you pick the pace up from the get-go, wala eh. Hindi maka-appreciate ng, ng viewer that uh, this this uh, ordinary teenager who has suicidal tendency suddenly gets these powers. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift was well, when Mirai tried to kill her, tried to kill himself. Jumps off a building. Yun, sinad ba siya ni Nase? Why did I call this a gear shift? Simple lang mga lifestyle. It triggered the entire episode at least. So, if you deep dive into this gear shift, Well, at that before before Nasi saved him, Mirai didn't believe in angels, didn't believe in heaven, in the concept of heaven and hell. So, walay. Talagang he's totally um, disillusioned with life at that point. Kaya kaya sa nagtangkam pa magpakamatay. That's what this gear shift will make you realize. Second gear shift was. When he first tried out the power of flight, talagang pang tao yung 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 size ng wings niya pang tao. Talagang uh, magmu nagmuasang ang nagmuasang angel dito. As in, for the first time, he has experienced the freedom and probably the happiness he wanted. So nakarating na siya ng Ireland. Uh, nakarating na rin siya ng Mexico <laughs> Pero On all those times Sinusundan siya ni Nase Well, why did I call this a gear shift? Well It's a um Character development gear shift Natural <laughs> Biglang, biglang nagkaroon ng isang Um Suicidal teenager na Ng ganitong powers And Well Uh On Nasa's own admission, it's her fault. Kasi, hindi niya nasabi kagad kay Mirai na mayroon palang ganito mga iba pang tao na may ganito rin kapangyarihan. Final gear shift. Whoop! The final scene. Doon na sinabi ni Nase na na hindi lang siya ang mayroong ganitong powers. There are... I think there are 12 others. So, labintatlo silang lahat. Bakit 13? Okay. So, all of them can be the next god. <laughs> Upisa ng episode, he just wanted to be happy. Now, he has a chance to be god. <laughs> ganon ka, ganon ka, ganon ka bilis to bakpo yung, yung araw niya rito ni Mirai. That's what this gearship will make you realize. Kaya ako tinanong na gearship nito. Well, these three gearships that I saw, we can say that these three gearships Triggered the anime. And, ito lang tatlong gears ito. Panoorin mo, maintindihan mo na siguro ang buong pilot. At least. <laughs> Plot-wise, malinis. But, despite having one or two backstory sequences, malinis pa rin ang plot. Kasi, it's just, um, it's just a few seconds eh. It's just a few seconds lang. Kumbaga, Flashes of flashes of Mirai's memories lang eh. Kumaga, binabalikan niya yung mga times na yon. Um, figuring out why why it has led to this. <laughs> so, malinis ba rin ang plot? Right? These flashback sequences, I think there I think there are two or three. Um There, they can be set aside na lang eh. Kumaga, ah, okay, ganito pa lang nangyari doon. So, okay, so that confirms it. Parang ganun lang eh. To confirm, uh, to confirm certain, uh, certain sequences in the main continuity. Yun lang ang purpose nun. Kaya, pakapyo na na, ano, kasi, it's pointless naman kung, kung gagawin mong first half of the episode yung iba. No, it's totally pointless. It, it's the pilot episode. You need the audience to focus on the main continuity of the episode. Kaya, tama lang. 
malinis pa rin ang plot. So, pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. Uy! If you've seen the episode already, napakinggan nyo ba yung OP? Bandmade! <laughs> Bandmade ang kumanta! First, well, Bandmade is practically everywhere right now when it comes to any song. First, it was Yu-Gi-Oh! Frames. Yung ED nun, one of the EDs. Then, uh, the OP of Log Horizon Season 3, which we reviewed last winter. And now, Platinum End, yung OP niya. Mukhang bagay ang music nila rito because... And, oi, munti ko na makakalimutan. The creators behind Death Note are also the creators of Platinum End, at least the manga. Kaya yung formula niya, halos kapareho na Death Note. Let me ask you a question. What do you get if you combine Death Note and Darwin's Game? Platinum End. So, Platinum End Episode 1. Diyan ko gising, ganda ng pilot ah! Oh! Tutaza! Like I said a while ago, if you combine the storylines of Death Note and Darwin's Game, you get this one. Kasi parang ganun yung, ano yung, ganun yung formula. Not exactly the, um, not exactly the storylines of both, uh, both animes that I've mentioned, pero, yung, yung, formula yung formula na sinundan ng dalawang anime na yon nandito so the main the main protag now has to um survive basically kasi labing tatlo silang god candidate so there's no guarantee na na lahat na lahat sila ay mabubuting tao <laughs> na pwedeng niya pwedeng niya makasundo no there's no guarantee maybe some of them will use, will abuse their powers for their own interests. Pwede mangyari. With that, wait, with that much power, you can actually do anything. Pang, pang Diyos na ang kapangyarihan mo eh. So, merong, merong gagawa na mabuti, meron din gagawa na masama. So, <laughs> it, yeah, it follows, the, it follows the same formula followed by Death Note, and Darwin's Game. Kaya ako tinanong sa inyo ng ganun. I see both, uh, uh, both of those storyline formulas in this one. At least in this uh, pilot. Parang, ang nakikita ko, yun ang magiging takbo ng anime na to. Yun ang magiging formula ng storyline na to. Kaya, it's a 24 episode run, guys. We'll, we're gonna have a blast reviewing this one. Um, the creators of Death Note have uh, have outdone themselves again. Yeah, panapana big talk. So I'm uh, I'm pretty much fucked to review this anime. So again, Platinum End Episode One. It goes up. Let's just do the drill, Maka Lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. In the meantime, <laughs> enjoy the other reviews in this uh, opening digest for volume. So we uh, we found Toa on a shoreline, wondering where. Uh, Setsu na yung Moroha went Kasi siguro uh, Binaba lang siya doon And uh, told And told to wait So uh, what she wa- What she was wondering Kung saan sila nagpunta uh, She was watching this little girl Setting seaweeds on On the shore Kasi siguro para kinu- Kinukula Para matuyo And siguro pagkain Siguro their next meal Then Um the wind suddenly uh, blew over her headdress. Eh, medyo... Uh, yung nanay kasi, malapit lang, nakita. Medyo nag-apura yung nanay. And so are um, two boys that were playing behind the little girl. Pero nakuha nila yung, ano, nakuha nila yung headdress. So while this was going on, um, nagtatanong-tanong na pala sila 
Moroha at Setsu na kung saan matatagpuan si Boko Seno. Yun daw, sa, according to Totosai, yun daw ang nakakalang kung saan sila makakakuha ng ng Kyuyokon Root na makakatulong kay Towa para itumba si Kirin Maru. So, Moroha got the information they wanted, so, takbo na siya agad kay, kay Lasetsu na. So, well, 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 well nag-uusap nga sila, they met up, uh, they suddenly saw this, um, this beautiful young lady holding uh, two seemingly heavy bags. Medyo, nabitawan niya isa, so tumulong si Moroha. And, sa, well, something to this effect, sabi ni Moroha, tulungan namin kayo, miss. So, t- tumulong naman. Much to the, much to the, much to Setsura's hesitation. So, tinulungan nila. So, while this was going on naman, um, tinanong na ni Towa kung bakit ganun lang ka, uh, what you call this, ganun ka stressed out ang nanay nung, uh, nung nawala yung headdress ng anak niyang babae. Sabi kasi ng matanda, there was a, uh, a snake, a sea snake demon na babae who was protect who was who was once protector of the seas yung yung pinakadagat ng ano nila ng village nila but later on it started attacking people and it seems to target women with long beautiful hair so nataka si si Towa but mo niya ate kayo Bakit gano'n lang ang rason niya para, um, para atakihin ng tao? Hmm. Ngayon, naalala niya bigla si Setsu na. <laughs> so, hinahanap niya ngayon kung nasa si Setsu na. Eh, kasi siya, siya talaga ang, ang long hair sa tatlo eh. Siya talaga may pinakamahabang buhok. So, while this was going on, um, na, na, i, uwi, na natulungan na nila Moroha at Setsu na itong tumagad ng babaeng to. To uh, they were able, they were successful in helping out this uh, this young lady get to her home. Na uh, na may dalawang mabibigat na bag. So pinakain sila as a sign of gratitude. Eh, ang uh, nagtataka si sexo na kung bakit panay ang banggit ng ng girl na to ng ng kanyang buhok na mahaba kasi para kaya nga para, Eh, kaya naka-ponytail parati si Setsu na kasi mahaba talaga yun. And, um, while this was going on, <laughs> ang daming while this is going on, no? kasi, um, pinuntahan nila, pinuntahan ni Towa, si, si Lahisui. At si, uh, yun, si, si Lahisui. Tinanong, nakita nyo ba si Setsu na? Ang sabi ni Lahisui, they don't know where, um, uh, Setsu na actually ba? Kasi hindi yata nagpaalam. Eh, sinabi lang ni Towa kasi naga- well, she's worried about his, she's worried about her sister. And, well, she has every right to be worried because while this was going on, habang, um, busog na busog ang tatlo, eto na, na, nagpakita na ng kanyang tunay na anyo ang, yung babaeng tinulungan nila. It was the sea snake demon herself. Inatake sila. So, pero, malamidusa pala ang powers ito. You look at her, and you turn to stone. <laughs> eh, na- Nahalata ka agad ni Setsu na kung anong demon power nito eh. Kasi, uh, I think she has that, ano eh, she has that ability to sense what a demon can do. So, sinabi na niya kay Moroka, huwag mo siyang tignan sa mata. And, well, the fight, in- the battle ensues. So, yung bahay na, na tinirhan ng sea snake demon, eh, yun, wasak. So, the battle spilled onto the to the shoreline. And, they even used Takechio as a shield. Yung enlarged form na. <laughs> kasi, hindi, kasi yun ang iniwasan na yun, yung tignan, tignan ang, ang demon na ito sa mata. Kasi, uh, baka sila maging bato eh. Yun ang iniwasan nila. And, they couldn't even aim straight. Kasi nga, 
Paano ka? Paano ka makasit ka? Kalaban na nakapikit niya ang mata mo. So, then, uh, reinforcements game. Ayun, yung, uh, yung mga Demon Hunters, kasama rin si Towa. Tama hinala ni Towa. So, now, they, they have to deal with this, um, with this Sea Snake Demon. They have to neutralize this one kasi ang dami na niyang idinamay na tao. Um, Setsuna had an idea. Ginamit niya ang kapangyarihan ng bago niya na ginata. Uh, that, that, that kind of a spear is called in Naginata. Uh, pinangalan ni Toto sa ito, I, for, I really forgot. I actually forgot the name. Ginamit niya yung, yung kapangyarihan nito. She was able to sense, uh, kumbaga, red, may red string na kumakabit dito sa sa red sa sea snake demon na to and to something else nagmakaawa pa may meron pang bosses na nagmakaawa kay Setsuna na wag putulin ito so what Setsuna he did that call she she went underwater at medyo malalim ayun nakita niya yung rebulto ng well let's say boyfriend ng sea snake demon uh uh may shota to um, which she in which she accidentally turned into stone kasi tumingin sa mata niya nung naging demon nung naging demon na siya nung naging ganito na siya so all Setsuna did was um, was raise it to raise it to the surface of the water ayun tumigil ng atake and she suddenly returned to her original form which is a beautiful sea snake demon yung um, yung pumoprotekta sa sa tubig dagat na yun sa parting yun and she just disappeared final scene what the three girls were just compl- contemplating what just happened oh by the way sinugod nga pala ni ni Towa ang sea snake demon but what who interferes Riku yes folks Riku is back and, uh, well, sort of tulong na rin ni Riku yung kasi in order for Toma to effectively attack this sea snake demon, kailangan walang tubig na mapagtatakbuhan nito. So, he he froze the water over. So, talagang walang matatakbuhan ngayon na sea snake demon. That's why they were able to somewhat beat it. Pero, ang talagang tumalo rito yung si Setsuna inahon niya yung istatwa ng, ng boyfriend nito. The, the three girls were comp- contemplating on ju- what just happened. Ang pinagtatakhan ni Moro ha, ayun, ayun. Hin, bakit, bakit biglang nag ang ang, dag, ang parte ng dagat na yun? Eh kasi, hindi pala nila alam na si si Rico ang may pakananon. But, um, while Toa was fighting this, the sneeze snake demon, nakalata niya. Si Rico may gawa nito. And what? Rico just uh, just watch them go and sabi niya, time to look for a uh uh Yuyokon route, Lady Towa. Tigas na mukha, eh, no? <laughs> let's let's just like let's just break this episode down ARD style. Pace. Naging tense na ang well, the pace picked up nung uh, nagpakita na nagpakita na ang sea snake demon in her true form kila Moroha at Setsuna so, talaga, talaga, pero ang talagang target niya rito ay si Setsuna kasi long hair nga eh. talagang pinupuntirya niya ang mga babaeng, babaeng long hair so wow it was uh, it was uh, it was a terrifying moment and talagang when it comes to uh, pace, episode pacing talagang pipick up ang pacing pag meron ganito klaseng eksena so balanced ang pacing ng episode na to because first half of the episode uh, it was confined to um, uh, kumaga Moroha and Setsuna played detective eh, kasi they, they were really asking around kung meron nakakakilala o nakakita na kay Bokuseno. Because, 
Siya lang talaga nakakalang ko sa mga ako ng Yoyokon route na na dapat gamitin towa. Mga re- requirement yun. So, talagang inakapura nila ito. And, uh, then, what? Based on what happened, okay. So, based on what uh, what the pacing delivered us, we can say that Moroha was stressing that the sea snake demon was the one they should they should have asked about. See, sa atin din ang nangyari, nakalimutan nilang gawin. Nakalimutan. Ay, nako moro ha. So, that, that's, what the, that's what the pacing of this episode will make you realize. Kung binagalan nil, kung minintain nila yung slowness ng first half ng episode, hindi ma-appreciate eh, ng ng viewer ang episode na to. Kasi, uh, it it eventually turned out to be a funny moment eh. Kasi, nagkalimutan talaga na talongin sa sea snake demon na to kung kilala niya si Boko Seno. Wala, busy-busy sila sa pag sa pag uh, sa pag neutralize sa demon na to eh. Kasi marami nang dinamay na tao. And eh, they just had to do something. So yun ang pin yun ang pin priority nila. Oh. Eh. So, you can't blame them. Flo naman. First gear shift here was um was when Moroha um, got the information she needed from Jubei, yung yung handler niya na corpse dealer, kasi dito niya binibenta lahat ng lahat ng bangkay ng demon na na tinutumba nilang tatlo. Dito, dito niya binibenta para magkapera sila. O di, meron silang um, travel, food, and um, any for essentials nila for their for their um, for their demon slaying career. Kumbaga. Eh, what? Nagkaroon siya lang, nagkaroon siya ng information dito. Bahay ko tilawag na gearship. Simple lang. Eh, what? Moro ha, Setsu na and Towa were, were making an honest living killing demons. Kasi sa bawat bangkay na dinideliver ni Moro ha dito kay Jubei, nagkakapera sila kahit pa paano. Uh, gano man kalit yan o gano kalaki it's still um, it's still enough for them to to sustain their career as uh, as demon slayers kaya tinawag kong gearship ito so, kumaga um, aside from the monetary reward nagkaroon din siya ng informational reward si Moroha kaya, kaya tinawag kong gearship to Second and final gear shift came when um, all three of them were now attacking the sea snake, this sea snake demon. Kasi so far lang talaga makakatak dito ay si Towa. Eh, unique na yung pag-block niya ng, ng power ng demon na to eh. Shades. Mirrored shades. <laughs> yung, ano, yung tinatawag na one way. Hindi mo makikita yung mata ng wearer, pero yung wearer kitang kita ka. Ganun yun. Ganun ang... Ganun ang... Ang... Principle ng one-way sunglasses. So, yun ang, yun ang ginamit niya. So, she's not totally affected by... By this demon's power of turning... Turning people into stone. Talagang... Uh, malino sa kanya kung nasan yung demon. She knows... She knows... Probably where to strike it. Ayun, eh, until... Riku comes in with the... Assist... Mukha nakapahama pa si Toe eh. Grabe. That's why I call it a gear shift. Kasi, um, with all three girls, they can take, they can really take out this demon. Pero, kung hindi dahil sa kapangirin, sa power ng naginata ni Setsu na, yung bagong power nun, hindi ano eh, eh hindi marilisod ng maayos ang problema ng demon na to. Eh, yun nga lang, hindi nga nila napatay, hindi rin nila nakuha na ng information nito. So, they only realized it in the final scene. Kaya, tinawag kong gear shift ito kasi it eventually led to a funny moment. Hindi nga nila napatay, pero wala rin, wala rin sila nakuha information dahil nagkalimutan na ang gagaw, ang, kung sa gagawin. 
Ay, naku, moro ha. So, these two gear shifts that I saw, yung final gear shift lang ang nakikita kong may impact in future episodes. Pero, it was an exciting one. Plot-wise, except for the backstory told by the sea snake demon, malinis ang plot. Ano lang naman eh, that backstory sequence was only uh, probably about 3 to 5 seconds. Pero, you cannot, um, you cannot put it aside. Dahil, ito yung pinaghuhugutan ng, ng sea snake demon na to kung bakit siya, um, bakit siya inis na inis sa mga babaeng mahahaba ang buhok. Dito yung, dito niya kinwento ang lahat. So, uh, she told, she spilled the beans regarding this one while she was being, while she was battling uh, Moroha and Setsuna. Kaya okay lang ang ganitong klaseng plot. Kasi malinis pa rin. The main continuity of the episode is, uh, can still be followed by the viewer kasi we only dealt with one backstory here. At, you can't, um, you can't put this aside. Kasi, uh, ito yung origin story ng Sea Snake Demon na to. If it weren't for this backstory, hindi maaalala ni Setsu na kung, uh, hindi maaalala ni Setsu na na, pero palang ganitong naging karelasyon, oh, karelasyon, ang, ang sea snake demon. So, with that in mind, dito niya ginamit yung kapangyarihan ngayon ng naginata niya. Kung baga may red string. Akala nga niya, ito dapat yung putunin eh, pero uh, there was a male voice that probably came out of the sea. Sinabi sa kanya, huwag mong puputulin. Please. Eh, nag nagmakaawa pa sa kanya. So, she um, had an alternative method. She swam underwater. Ayun, nakita niya. Yung rebulto ng mismong um, lalaking minahal ng sea snake demon na to na pinatay siya accidentally. So, yun, nag nagkaayos naman yung dalawa. And, oh, the guy apologized kasi hindi naman niya talaga hindi naman niya talaga alam na Siya pala ito, yung pilatay niyang sea snake nun. And, well, uh, apology accepted. Uh, feeling, probably feeling regret for all, for all the people that she has turned to stone. Eh, nagtago na lang. She reverted back to her original form at nagtago na lang. So, sa sobrang, sa sobrang kahihiyan. And that's what the plot will make you realize. Kung, um, if we put in an additional side or backstory in this in this episode, mawawala na focus ang viewer. Mawawala na focus kasi, what, Morohan needs this sea snake demon to spill the beans regarding Boko Seno. If they really want, if they, they're trying their very best to look for a, a Yuyukon route. At itong si Boko Seno lang ang nakakalang kung saan makakakuha. So, they're just banking on tot on the information Toto Sai gave them. Kaya, you really need a, a plot as clean as this para ma-realize ng viewer ko what's at stake right now. So, base, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. Galing! <laughs> Thank you, Sunrise, for uh, for another great episode of uh, Yasha Hime. Yeah, talagang uh, talagang tumindig ang balahibo ko when, when that when that sea snake demon uh, showed her true form Na, talagang talagang pinuntirian niya si Setsu na <laughs> kasi haba ng buhok ni Setsu kaya nga naka ponytail parati yan eh ganun kahaba buhok niya oh my god it's time to get a haircut Setsu na <laughs> so Yasa Him in the second act episode 2 Deserve. Thumbs up. Excuse me. <coughs> so, <laughs> uh, you get to ask yourself, 
What happens now? Sang uh, sang ay makakuha ng ng informasyon kung nasa tumbo ko sino na to. Hindi nyo na sa sobrang busy nyo sa pag neutralize sa demon na to, hindi nyo na na itanong. Nagkalimutan na. So, talagang Um, Setsuna and Moro have have their work cut out for them for um for this Yuyukon route. Na talagang kailangan kailangan ni Towa. Kasi winarningan na sila ni Toto Sai in the last episode. Towa should not wield a weapon um uh, made by humans. As much as possible, kailangan demon ang gumawa. Like him, yeah. A demon like him. So, her best chance now at um at killing Kirin Maru is this one. Yuyukon root. So, maghanap pa kayo ngayon. <laughs> Pahira pa na naman. <laughs> But, uh, that's how um, that's how the adventures of these three girls work. <laughs> minsan katangahan nito, minsan katangahan ni Towa, minsan katangahan ni Moro ha. Pero mong sunod tayo si Moro ha! And... Well... Rico has just reappeared for season 2 and um... Personally, I still don't want to trust this guy. Eh... Inaglag na nga niya yung tatlo eh! Although... Kahit, kahit may gusto sa Kitoa, dinaglag pa rin niya yung tatlo eh! And... Um... Dinobo cross din niya si Kirin Maru. For a guy who can for a oh, for a character who can double cross both the main protagonist and the main antagonist, yung uh the the boss villain is for me that's a more dangerous character. Mas delikadong mas delikadong character yun. Mas hindi mo dapat pagkatiwalaan as a viewer. Ganun lang yan. His powers aren't that much, but his ability to double cross both humans and demons. He can actually, he can actually start a consulting business based on that. He's not devious. Kaya, wag mo na magtiwala kay, kay, kay Rico until totoo ang feelings niya kay Towa. So again, Yasha Hime the second act, episode 2. Thumbs up. Just do those with mga lifestyle. Let's wait for next week and watch that episode. Kaya, in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this initial digest for volume. Excuse me. Our story begins when, um, well, we see that um, the 86 have uh, have found um, oh my god, found something to do. Si Raiden, uh, tatrabaho sa isang parang parang forwarding company, mga mga movers sila. Oh my merong delivery silang magdadala don. So talagang uh, heavy. Uh, heavy work, heavy work siya in nature. Aside from uh, Raiden, si Shin naman um, frequents the library for well, military documents and books. Uh, Shin met a, uh, met a guy there named... Uh, I don't know name niya. But anyway, he befriends this kasi yung kapatid niya na batang babae uh, was being rude to him. Eh, in-approach siya ng siyempre, kuya. Nag-apologize. Eh, sabi ni Shin, okay lang yan. So, they became, they became friends, so to speak. Kasi, they have a common interest. They love, uh, they love military stuff. Eh, mukhang hindi pa kilala ng taong to si Shin ng ganong, ng ganon. Eh, dat, eh, dating 86 na si Shin. <laughs> so, while they were, um, living there, living, uh, the lives, the lives they chose, Well, there was a military parade going on. See, si Raiden, ane, 
everybody except Shin realize na their time of um to call this their time of relaxing is over. Eh, ganon din ang sentiment ni Shin. So nasa bahay na sila lahat. Nag, nag meeting meeting sila. Let's go back onto the battlefield. So yun ang common mentality ngayon ng mga 86. So binalita nila kay Ernst. We want to go back on the battlefield. We want to go to war again. Eh, hindi pa maayos si Ernst. Kasi, what? You, sa, ang point kasi ni Ernst, you've earned this kind of a life. Dahil, ang laki ng, ang laki ng pahirap sa inyo ng Republic. You deserve this kind of a life. Pero sabi nila, sabi nila, Shin, we chose, uh, we chose our lives. We also, Want to choose how we die? Something to that effect. Ngayon to si yung batang babae. I forgot her name already. Meron pala, meron pala siyang inamin dito in this scene. She was the last empress of Jad. She ordered the legion to to invade the rest of the continent. You you know, kumbaga final orders niya. And somehow down down the line, she was ousted by the legion. So, kung, kaya ganito na lang ang buhay niya isang parang parang isang ordinaryong batang babae pero tinanong siya kagad ni Raiden how old were you 10 years ago? <laughs> o nga <laughs> o, o nga how old were you 10 years ago? so but, ang point lang kasi ng batang babae ito is this Ernst you don't get to choose how they live their lives Kung gusto nilang sumabak sa banan, pabayaan mo na. Oh, Ernst relented on one condition. Kailangan pumasok sila sa officer school para maging officer. So, the whole 86 agreed. Ayun. Sumabak sila sa banan. Final scene. It's actually a post-credit. So, they were all in federacy uniform um, going to going through their first day of officer school na. So, papasok na sila. Kasama yung batang babae na... Ano ba itong uniform nito? Kasi, pumayag din yung batang babae na, na sumamak sila sa labanan. Also on one condition, isama siya. What the hell? <laughs> May excess baggage sila tuloy ngayon. Let's break this episode down muna, ARD style. Pace. Average yung pagka-slow. Kasi, um, in one pictures probably wanted us to understand that uh, they're living a life of peace right now. Then all of a sudden, this military parade um, comes hopping on the street. The majority of them uh, had this hallelujah, sort of hallelujah moment and decided na their, their time of relaxation is over. R&R. &R. Their R&R their &R time is over. They need to go back on the battlefield. That's what the pacing will make you realize. Kung binilisan nila ang pacing ng episode na to, I assure you, mga ka-lifestyle, hindi natin ma-appreciate ang episode na to. We wouldn't feel happy for the 86. We wouldn't feel that happy. Flow naman. Well, first gear shift that I saw here was um, when yun, si Korea. When Korea um, started becoming a um, uh, sort of a fashion buff, uh holy parang ganun eh. Kasi uh, she was reading a book, she was reading a magazine in fashion magazine in one scene. Napatingin siya nun, ganun sa isang uh, fashion store. So, nagandaan siya doon sa isang damit. Oh, Papost-post ba nga eh. Tapos yung nak nakita siya ng isang CSN, hindi medyo nahiya siyang ganun. So, probably she eventually went in and uh, she's gonna bought some clothes herself. Well, why did I call this a gear shift? Well, simple lang mga lifestyle. This is proof that the 86 have been living a life of peace. Kasi, what? Babae si Korea. So, of course, when you're when you're a woman, you tend to have stronger fashion sense than men. 
Alam ko yan. Kaya nakita ko yan sa mother ko. Nakita ko rin yan sa mga ex ko. <laughs> so, natuloy lang sa babae ang maging fashion buff. You gotta feel happy for Korea. Kasi, uh, napupulpil ngayon yung pag- pagiging babae niya. Kasi nagkakaroon siya ngayon ng fashion sense. That's why I called it the gear shift. Second gear shift was when um, Shin uh, and uh, his newfound uh, friend were in the library. They were checking out. Uh, Shin was checking out military documents. Si, si itong kaibigan niya uh, checking out the checking out military books naman. Kasi ang bala pa na ng kaibigan niya to pumasok sa officer school. Gustong gusto mag-serve din sa military. Why did I call it a gear shift? What? It just goes to show you how much um how much Shin misses war. Kasi puro military documents ang binabasa niya all throughout the library. We're in what well, he's fi- he's 15. Tandaan niyo, Shin is only 15 years old. Pero maaga na siyang nasabak sa labanan. So ang tendency ngayon ng utak niya hanapin ang Materials pertaining to the military. Yung kasi nakasanayan niya eh. So, you would actually feel sorry for Shin at this point. Kasi, he should be in school. Uh, at least, siguro mga, parang mga middle or middle or high school. Well, whatever, uh, whatever level of education he should be in. He should be doing well in school. Well, matalino si Shin eh. Kaya ako din ako nag-gear shift ito kasi you would you would be at that point of uh, pity for Shin kasi ito lang alam niyang buhay military ito kasi yung nakasanayan niya ever since he was probably uh, 11 or 12 years old uh, we all know how the Republic does business with the, with uh, with non-Albans Pinapasabak nila sa labanan hanggang sa mamatay sila dun. Shin is a prime, prime example of the atrocities San Magnolia has been uh, has been doing since this war started. Bottom line. Final gear shift was, yeah, when they decided to to tell Ernst na ito ang gusto namin buhay, babalikan namin ang buhay na to. Why did I call us a gear shift? Again, simple lang, mga ka-lifestyle. Their time of rest and relaxation is over. They need to be on the battlefield right away. Una, una kasi, sa una ayaw ni Ernst. Because, to, from his point of view, he, they have earned this kind of a life. This peaceful a life. Kasi they've been, they've been, they've been battling the Legion all throughout their teen years, basically. Hindi na natupad yung kanilang magiging teenager. So, pero, uh, nilibat naman siya ni, ano, ni, oh, baka na ng batang baba yun. Damn it, I forgot. The last empress of Jihad told Ernst to, to, to just can it. If these, uh, if, if these 86 want to go back onto the battlefield, they, he should just let them. So, eventually, what? Well, he's out, Ernst is outnumbered at this point, so he be, he eventually relents. And pero on one condition, kailangan pumasok sila sa officer school. Eh, pumayag naman yung mga 86 and yung batang babae na isa sa mga niya. It's a very pivotal gear shift because the 86 will be practically serving under a new country, the Jad Federacy, hindi na San Magnolia. Though and the way I see it, based on this gear shift. Down the line, they will face Lena on the battlefield. Kasi kalaman, kasi considered na political enemy ng ng Federacy ang San Magnolia. And of course, the Legion. So, technically, the Federacy is fighting a war on two fronts. Because they have to deal with both the Legion and San Magnolia at the same time. Politically, kalaban nila ang San Magnolia. But, uh, when it comes to talagang, but militarily right now, it's the Legion. Talagang uh, hindi uh, maalis sa mga sistema ng mga 86 ang labanan eh. So, 
uh, the little girl thought, Hayaan mo na! If they want to serve the Federacy, go! At least, well, their combat experience will serve them well when they when they serve the Federacy. Ang dating 86 eh. So these three gear shifts that I saw, they will play a role down the line in this uh in in season two, especially the last one. Kasi papaso na bilang kasi the moment they graduate from that school, mga officer na sila sa Federacy. They will command their own uh their own platoon of um uh, uh, anong ano ba taong ng federasyon doon? Para, para mga juggernaut din. So, I fear that down the line, they may cross paths with Lena and uh, and the Republic themselves. So, they might encounter the new 86 on the battlefield. Baka gano'n na mangyayari dito. Yun, kasi yun na nakikita kong uh, daan na tatahakin ng nila Shin ngayon. So, 86 Part 2 Episode 2 mm. Yeah What's up, up? I'm gonna tell you why Kung bakit ako Naging apprehensive Sa pag 2 thumbs up ko Well Kasi Found some uh, Scenes Boring Pero It didn't put, It didn't put me to sleep Wala Wala well, for an episode this slow, wala siyang sleeper moments. Probably because of the fact that um, if you're the viewer, you would probably be happy with the 86. You would feel happy, and feeling happy doesn't make you, doesn't make you sleepy. Diba, mga ka lifestyle? So, it, is, it, still deserves, it still deserves the two thumbs up. Because, um, Ang mga 86 na mismo nag, ang nagpase na their time of relaxing is over. They need to be on the battlefield again right away. Sila na mismo nagpasya. No, um, no grave circumstances motivated them to reach such a decision. All it took was a military parade. Most of them, ha? most of them. Si Shin kasi, uh, matagal na siyang atat natat na sumabak sa labanan uli that's why he's that's probably why he is uh frequents this library for military documents nag-aaralan na niya ang siguro pinag-aaralan na niya yung style ng Judd Federacy on how to on how it uh on how it deals with the legion and also probably politically on how it deals with the republic he i think he needs to do this he needs to he needs to study all of this before the rest reach their decision. Just in case. Parang ganun. Parang ganun na. Kita ko siya. Kaya, this episode still gets the two thumbs up from me. Kaya, ganun pa rin ang naging rating ko. Pero, although apprehensive. Two thumbs up is two thumbs up. <laughs> so, again, 86 part 2, episode 2. Two thumbs up. Tayo talaga naman talaga ang tinitizer ng, uh, ng anime na ito. Eh, parang hindi kayo nasanay. So, we'll just have to do the drill. We will wait for next week and watch that episode. So, in the meantime, mga ka-lifestyle, enjoy this initial digest for Volume 6. So, we, we start the story with, um, with a girl named Sakura Banka. Looking, looking on the looking upon the stars wishing so while all of this is going on uh, a guy named Teroto Kurabe was also looking at the stars and well as the uh, as the episode went on they bump into each other by yeah by accident kasi may humahabol kay kay Sakura noon uh, pero para may atraso para may para may atraso para may ano eh May, may atraso, may atraso sa, sa, sa barumbado. So, hinabor siya. And, and all of a sudden, um, Teroto butts in. Siyempre, uh, they bump into each other. Ayun nga, uh, naisalba niya si, 
si Sakura from this thug. Wow! In a uh, in pretty card player type of fashion kasi may nilabas ang card na gano'n na may demonyong lumabas. <laughs> wow! What a way to save a dancer in this dress. But, so, ni, ni Garo Quinted at nalaman pala ni Sakura na well, pero to doesn't remember a thing about the cards he has. So, well, binigyan na siya ng rundown ni Sakura. Uh, that deck you have is a deck of cards for a game called Build Divide. So, in-explain niya yung rules and uh, in-invite niya si Terto dito sa isang lugar wherein isang ano lang eh, may lumabas ng play, parang playing arena na ganun. Akala nga ni Tero to, um, he was tricked. Pero sabi ni Sakura, no. I just want something to respect. I just want to know how good a player you are. So, well, naglaro sila. But while they were playing, Sakura was explaining the rules to him. But as they were going along in this, ba- this card battle, uh, nakakaroon ng flashbacks si... Tero to. Uh, telling, telling him to defeat the king, defeat the king. Tapos, there's something, there's someone whispering to him na uh, something to respect. You need, you, there's something you need to do. And that is beat the king. As in a fit of retrograde amnesia, naalala niya lahat now. So, while, well, patalo na siya. That's where the, that's where he remembered everything. His deck, his um, his battling style. Nigla no bas. Nang hood sang ganun. Tapos may meron pa lang built-in face mask yon. Tinakpan niya yung bunga nga niya. Well, ikaya siguro, this is the real me. Let's play. So, now the duel is uh, the duel, pwede kasi Yugi. <laughs> Sorry guys, ah, kasi Yugi player ako. Kaya nasaan ako sa terminology namin. Eh. What, so what this battle was going on, it was going back and forth. All of a sudden, dalawa lang ang lives ni Tero to. Si Sakura, marami pa. But, well, out of the blue, he activates his territory and his ace card in the process. So, he turns the game around, he beats Sakura. Talaga sunod-sunod yung damage niya during his, um, his winning turn. Grabe. Final scene. At the moment, Teroto finally remembers everything. Sort of. Yung pinaka right hand man ng king na alerto. Oh, sabi ni sabi lang niya. Let's get it started. Parang something to that effect. Because sabi niya before this, he has returned. Mukhang alam na nila na si Tero to ang tanging makakatalo sa king. So, I, I guess they're trying to protect the king as as much as they can. So, during that final scene, naglabas sila ng mga dealers. Naglabas pa sila ng mga dealers. Wow. <laughs> and, wow! I guess we have a new card game in town, boys. <laughs> Hindi lang Yu-Gi-Oh! Hindi lang Vanguard, hindi lang Magic the Gathering, hindi lang Body Fight, hindi lang din Y Swartz. There's a new kid in town. It's called Build Divide. So let's break this episode down, ARD style, before we talk about before we talk about the the current card game uh, industry right now. Base. What? Well, like in like in it's uh like in Yu-Gi-Oh. Or even in uh, even in Vanguard, because I've seen I've seen a few episodes of the first Vanguard series and uh, the latest one, Overdress. When there's a duel or battle scene, the pace always picks up. So it did. The pilot of this anime is no different. Kaya I absolutely had those Yu-Gi-Oh feels. Because I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player, ako eh. No, it's like, oh, yeah, no, yeah. Mukhang na, mukha na goyo bida sa, sa battle ah. Well, 
if there's another thing that the PC will tell you, it's this. Basically, new anime, new card game. Deal with it. <laughs> Flow naman. Ang bilis ko, no? Well, I really want to... I really want to... um. I really want to explain the uh, the rules of the card game based on the pilot, right? So, flow tayo. First gear ship was when Teruto bumps into Sakura, uh, saving her, no, well, becoming her knight in shining armor at that point. Why did I call this a gear ship? Simply lang. Let's just say na talaga may amnesia si Teruto, but he was able to use that card to to protect Sakura. Talagang, wow. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what he did to that thug, pero basta lang nakita natin, if you've, if you've seen the episode, bumulag na lang. In the world of Build Divide, this is, uh, this is now what this gearship is telling me. These cards are not just for playing. They're for determining who will, who will be the next contender to the king. Kaya siguro ganong kalakas yung mga yun. It can be used for, uh, probably can be used for a variety of reasons. Like, uh, yan. Um, Self-defense. <laughs> naputol nga niya yung, naputol nga niya yung blig na baliso na hawak eh. Isang, isang barala na ganun. And of course, for playing. So, wow. Second gear ship was when Sakura invited Teroto to play this game. Ayun nga, yung mabas yung Basta na lang siya nagtawag ng parang dealer niyo, parang bola na ganun, may, may lalabas. Activate Duel Arena. Activate Duel Pue! Sorry! Activate Battle Arena. Hmm, nagdabas. At inassure naman, inassure naman niya si Teruto that this is primarily for, uh, something to this effect. Keeping the, the combatants safe from, well, of course, from outside interference. Number one done. Obvious. Why did I call this a gear ship? But, syempre, this gear ship has now opened our eyes to the rules of this game. If you're not um, totally used to um, watching card game animes, you may find this shocking. <laughs> you may find this shocking, mga lifestyle. I am warning you. Ako, sorry na ako sa mga card game animes because of Yu-Gi-Oh! Kaya, when I saw, uh, when I saw the synopsis for Build Divide, sabi ko, Ba? Card game? Hindi eh, bago. O oh, sige, let's take this on. <laughs> so, that's what this gear ship uh, made me realize just now. Final gear ship was when, the, at the moment, Teruto beat Sakura. Talagang sunod-sunod yung damage niya. Because, right here, in order for you to lose uh, the game. Kailangan maubos lahat ng lives mo. And, kapag naubos, kapag ubos ng lives mo, if you take more damage, talaga talo ka. So, that's primarily how to lose in this game. Sa Yu-Gi-Oh! kasi, if you want to lose in a, uh, if you want to lose the game, kailangan max out lahat ng 8,000 life points mo, or, Wala ka na mabunot na card sa deck mo. Those are the two those are the two obvious ways for you to lose the game. Pero dito, if you have all your lives maxed out tapos to make up ng damage, talo ka. Well, there's there, well, with the with a rule like this, there's still a chance for a comeback kasi kahit wala ka ng lives, you can still there is still a very slim chance that you can actually beat your opponent. That's what this gear ship is telling me. So, I figured, hmm, mukhang excited na card game to. <laughs> mukhang kayang, mukhang, mukhang pwede kong karirin to. Ah. So, these three gear ships I saw, uh, seriously, mga kalaistan, it has opened my eyes to a new card game, but, the, the final gear ship definitely will play a role in future episodes. Plot wise. Hmm. Merong flashback moments. Nah. 
Malinis. Because I only saw two flashback moments here. Because Teruto has been having um uh quick flashbacks during the battle, during the card battle. So talagang talagang flashback sa masasabi. Because one or two seconds lang, ganun kabilis. Talagang uh, ano lang eh. And uh yung yung bosses na kumakausap sa kanya hindi naman nun eh. you can't call that a um a side story or even a back story parang kinakausap lang siya he is having flashes of his memories uh siguro his memories are slowly coming back because of those flashes kaya you don't need to expound on those kinds of scenes you just just give him one or two seconds of exposure just to stress a point in a particular sequence and it did kaya malinis pa rin ang plot so pace, flow, and plot they all came together for this pilot and I tell you guys it's one of the most exciting pilots I have seen so far in this anime season well, well at least for at least in this, ro in this new roster kaya well to all the card gamers out there, there's a new kid in town. Its name is Build Divide. <laughs> so, Build Divide, Code Black, Episode 1. Easy pa. Oh, this card game has uh, has a lot of potential. Thumbs up! We've got that out of the way. Now, let's talk about the current um, card game industry. So, as you all know by now, I am a Yu-Gi-Oh! player. And, meron din ako mga co-players na naglalaro din ng mga ibang card games like Vanguard, Magic the Gathering, White Schwartz, even, even Transformers the card game. Yes, folks, Transformers is now also a card game. There are also card games like Final Fantasy, aha, uh -huh. Final Fantasy is now also a card game. And, um versus which uh which involves the DC and Marvel superheroes and there's also um uh, I forgot the name of that I forgot the name of that card game pero those are the card games right now that are uh somewhat major players in the industry pero the two giants are still Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic the Gathering ito ang dal dalawang giganti ng industriya but with the advent of Build Divide. Now, I just uh, researched on who the designer is and when it's going to come out. Mga ka lifestyle. Sa oras pala na mag-debut ang anime na to, ilalabas na rin within the same month ang card game. So, October. So, within this month, ilo-launch lang ang card game. I'm quite interested in it. Bakit? Kasi... The, cre the the design the main designer of Build Divide also designed Dual Masters and Vanguard. What caught my fancy in this card game is this. You don't have to do much math like in Yu-Gi-Oh! or um experience a slow pace like in Vanguard or Magic the Gathering. As I heard kasi ano daw eh? Mas mabilis daw talaga ang Yu-Gi-Oh! kaysa Magic. So, ang kukumpitin mo lang dito, yung difference in uh, difference in attack stats yata, yun, between the Yu- Kasi, uh, kasi in Yu-Gi-Oh! we call the um, the the cards that do the attacking and defending monsters. Dito sa Build Divide, units ang tawag. So, Titingnan na lang kung sinong mas mataas ang ano, mas mataas ang ang uh, what's it called this? Ah, they, they got a term for that eh. Kasi yung attack stats. Kung sino ang mas mataas ang attack stats, yun ang panalo sa battle. On that particular battle. And yun lang talaga eh. Yun lang talaga competition mo dun. So, Every time you take damage, bawas ka ng isang life. Wala ka nang, wala kang, wala kang ibang kukumpitin. There are no life points involved. Just 10 lives, pag naubos yung lives mo and you take 
and you take uh, more damage, you lose. Ganon lang yan. Tapos meron pa sila tinatawag na burst trigger. Kung baga, uh, kapag ang yung isang life na yun eh, merong burst trigger, oh, tanggal ka pa ng isang life. Patay. <laughs> lalong bumilis yung lalong bumilis yung pagkatalo mo. So, I can say that based on the pilot of this anime, mukhang kasing bilis ito ng Yu-Gi-Oh! Pero, yung mechanics niya, halos kapareho ng Vanguard at saka Duel Masters because they're by the same designer. Eh, tanda ko nga yung ano nilip. Pati yung terminology. Kapag attack phase, you have to switch that to horizontal, yung unit. Rest din ang tawag Rest din ang tawag doon Para maka-attack siya Pero pag naka-upright yun Naka-defense yun Yun sa Vanguard talaga I, I've seen I've seen the rules of Vanguard already Yun ang talaga sa Vanguard Pareho rin dito sa Build Divide Kaya sabi ko Parang yung Kapareho Parang, parang Vanguard ah Yung pala Isa designer So I'm quite interested in Uh, in this card game, I might, I might take it up as long as I can afford the cards, okay? Because the Yu-Gi-Oh, medyo, medyo may kamahalan na rin eh. But um, let's see uh, if there are if there are more rules to be um, to be divulged in the next in the next few episodes. Kaya tutuwa natin ang anime nito para malaman natin kung paano talaga ilaro ang card game nato. So again. Build Divide Cold Black, Episode 1! Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up for, well, for the newest kid on the block, mga lifestyle. We'll just have to do the drill again, mga lifestyle. We will wait for next week and watch the next episode. Kaya, habang wala pa, enjoy the other reviews in this digest.